Georgia versus Florida. An ancient rivalry that is so bitter, the two sides can't even agree when the first game took place. Both would agree, however, that this season has had its share of nightmares. Florida appears haunted by the memory of the departed Tim Tebow. The successes of recent seasons already a distant memory as they search for an identity and a winning formula. Oh, man. Here we go again. Oh, man. Georgia had a ghoulish start to its season, suffering through its worst stretch in nearly two decades. The Bulldogs' losing streak has reached four games. But despite the frightening moments incurred by both, Georgia and Florida arrive here for their annual border war with a chance to rise from the dead. So here on the eve of Halloween, who gets tricked and who gets treated to another week as a contender in the SEC East? Isn't that a beautiful scene? Jacksonville, Florida makes you want to strike up the band. It is the last Saturday in October, and that means the Florida Gators, a certain bulldog, and a team from the University of Georgia. It's the annual get-together between these two teams that share such great affection for each other. We welcome you to the Home Depot SEC on CBS, the Florida Gators and the Georgia Bulldogs from Jacksonville. And despite their mediocre midseason records, this game has relevance. Take a look at the column on the left. Georgia, 3-3 three and three in the SEC East. Florida, 2-3. and three. They both are chasing South Carolina, but they are both still alive in the quest to get to Atlanta. Vern Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wolfson, we welcome you to Jacksonville. This game does have relevance. Yeah, it does, Vern. I don't know if these two fan bases are more shocked by the records that they have so far or that they're still in the race. I mean, that usually doesn't happen. But you know what also produces something else? The winner, yes, is in it. But the consequences of a loss in this game is huge. It will be a disastrous season for the loser of this game. Well, let's talk first about the team that's going this way. <laughs> Georgia's won three in a row. Yeah, and I think it has to be traced to the play, the improved play of their quarterback, Aaron Murray. A freshman quarterback, the only non-starter returning from a year ago to this team. Ten other starters returned. He's gotten better every game. And coincidentally, it might be because of A.J. Green. Suspended the first four games himself. His return has made everybody on this Georgia team that much better. He's one of the best in the country at what he does. And interestingly, Vern, in this football game, the matchup he's going to face against Georgia, against Florida, Florida. Florida doesn't like the double-team receivers. We got to watch if they just don't go at them early and often. Well, it's shocking to say, but under Urban Meyer, first time Florida has lost three in a row. Yeah, and I was thinking about go-to players for Florida. Two years ago, they had Harvin and Tebow. Last year, they had Tebow. Who is it this year? You're still searching, but they may have some speed returning on the game. Chris Rainey is back from a suspension, and Jeff Demps, injured the last few weeks, is back and supposedly 100%. I think that's where they find the big plays with those two guys. However, Florida needs better quarterback play. Will it be John Brantley throwing the ball, or in this bye week from Urban Meyer, could it be some tweak for this football game? Well, Jeff Demps, we are told, is 100%. Not so with other players. For more on that, here's Tracy. Well, that's right, Vern. The Gators off week came at a good time in terms of getting players healthy. You mentioned Demps, running back Mike Gillis. He's close to 100%. Urban Meyer telling me wide receiver Andre DeBose is still out with a sprained ankle. Kicker Caleb Sturgis, he is sidelined again with a hairline fracture in his back. And defensive tackle Jay Howard is still sidelined as well with the ankle sprain, guys. All right, Tracy, as you can tell by this cobalt blue sky in Jacksonville, it's perfect. 77 degrees, calm winds. And the forecast for mostly sunny. 
Well, there is a disparity in the number of games played. We're going to go with Georgia's record just for this year because they're the home team. The game in dispute took place in 1905. Georgia said we played and won 52 nothing. Florida says that was a club team, and it's not in their record book. We do know the records here. Georgia having won three in a row. These guys having lost three in a row. Yeah, and I, and I really thought that this Georgia football team this year, with all the returning starters on offense, had a real shot at making a run. And they're still in it. Mark Richt has kept his team in it. But the rest of the conference has kind of backed up to him. And one wonders if South Carolina doesn't have too much of a head start. Florida won the toss, and they have deferred the option to the second half. And that means that Georgia will get the ball to open the game. And it also means that you're going to see a young man playing in his first game ever for the University of Florida. This is Zachary Brust. He's a walk-on junior. He has suited up twice this year, but he's never kicked off. Now, Brad Phillips, who was the walk-on kicker the last three weeks, pulled a hip muscle last week. So Caleb Sturgis out, as Tracy said. And now, Zachary Brust is going to kick deep. All he's got to do is kick to a guy who four times in his career has returned kickoffs for Amen. touchdown. Amen. One of the best in the SEC, and he pooch it. Oh, oh dear. Fair catch taken at the 23-yard line. And hey, that was a very effective. When you fair catch at the 23, that's about as good as you can do. Yeah. Now, Aaron Murray, redshirt freshman out of Tampa. And uh, as Gary said, he has improved here in recent weeks. 63%. He can also beat you with his feet, can't he? Yeah, he she sure can. I mean, Mark Rick said he will be a winning quarterback for Georgia along the lines of the best he's had. It's just going to take a little time. Well, it took about three or four games. With Sean Ely, despite a sore knee, is the starting tailback. Mentioned that Caleb King is back also. There's the block. Mealy intercepted. Picked up by Janoris Jenkins. Wow, what a start for the Gators. Uh, I, I have to be honest, this ball was late by Murray. And also, A.J. Green really never went back for the ball. He just kind of stood there. There's the matchup. Jenkins and A.J. Watch. He just stands there, tries to shield Jenkins out of the way with his left side, but he needed to step into that throw and help his quarterback out. And right. Remember last year, Vern, it was four interceptions by Georgia that really cost him this football game. Absolutely. And it was a rout last year. So Florida takes over at the 29-yard line. Here's Brantley. Little swing pass out to the left. It's Chris Rainey, who is back on the roster, having been cleared to resume play. Rainey and we'll develop his story. Let's talk about John Brantley, who has really struggled in his first year as a starter. Well, yeah, look at, I think, up Florida. We're already going to see the tweak here, Vern. They're going to hurry up. Look at this. And Trey Burton is in yes. the Wildcat formation. You've already seen the tweak. Let's see how good the tweak works. Do you, well, do you wonder if Urban spent his time watching Oregon and Auburn in his off week? Well, he said he didn't, but I bet he yeah, did. Yeah, I think he did, because this is a new look. A new look for the Florida team. Much more of a hurry up. Now they've got Rainey in the backfield with Burton. Oh, and the leading tackler for Georgia, Akeem Dent, who's had toe problems before, already comes up limping. So Christian Robinson takes his spot. That is a first down. Boy, what a disastrous start for Georgia. First pass interception, and the second leading tackler in the SEC goes out. Here's Burton. Nope, back to Brantley. A quick oh, I beg your pardon. Yep. yep. No, no, Bert, you were right. Burton lined up, and then a quick shift to Brantley back to quarterback. Boy, they are tweaking and tweaking, aren't they? <laughs> well, John Brantley, first year as a starter. Waited patiently behind Tebow, 13 minutes. But look at the touchdowns and interceptions. Yeah, but see, now Brantley's back out at wide receiver. So this is why they kicked us out of practice oh, yesterday. Yeah. I don't blame them. Burton. Yeah, nothing, no. 
Justin Houston is going to be an all-SEC defender, maybe all-American. And let's set the uh, offense for Florida. Gilbert, Johnson, Pouncey, Hurt, and Nixon. And you've got Thompson, Burton, Demps, Reed, and Moore. Demps bothered by a foot injury ever since the Tennessee game. I'll tell you one thing about a quick offense. If it leads to a quick punt, it doesn't work. That's a great point about punts. Brantley down all the way back to the 27. Daryl Gamble, number 50, was the first there. I recall that Florida tried this a year ago. Remember their kamikaze offense? They started out with quick huddles. But this has been the bugaboo for Florida the last three games. Sacks. Three of them last week and already one in this football game. And so the field goal unit comes on. Caleb Sturgis not suited up. Back injury, re-injured it on Wednesday. This is Chaz Henry, who is the punter. And this will be from 42 yards out. He's had a tough go. And this one hooks at the last minute and curves wide left. And that would have been good without the sack. The same yardage, 42 that he missed last week when he missed it right, 42 this week he missed it left. So the punter, Chaz Henry, is now two for six. He's missed four in a row. Oh, yeah. Field position and special teams, something that Urban Meyer rode to that great record of the last five years has been deserting him this year. On the other sideline, Mark Rick. He's pleased. It's time for the Bud Light Playbook. Today, how to work the weekend without missing the game. What's happening? Since we're stuck here working the weekend, I hooked up the projector to show the game. And I brought in some Bud Light. Excellent job. Yeah! Are they hiring? Bud Light, the sure sign of a good time. Here we go. Yo, Troy, you've been using my shampoo because it's for guys who want thicker looking hair. I didn't use it. Didn't you? No. Didn't you? Yes. Head and shoulders hair your shampoo. Claims to give you thicker looking hair in one week. Hi, Fifty. Hey, sandwich lady. Chicken flatbread sandwich for under a buck. So... <laughs> It's under a buck, and not everyone's happy about it. The new chicken flatbread sandwich, warm flatbread, melty cheese, and flame grilled chicken. Only at Taco Bell. Hi, we're looking to save some money on our car insurance. Great. At Progressive, you can compare rates side by side so you get the same coverage, often for less. Wow, that is huge. And this is to remind you that you could save hundreds. <laughs> Yeah, that'll certainly stick with me. We'll take it. Go, big money! I mean, go. It's your break, honey. Same coverage, more savings. Now that's progressive. Call or click today. LG, as a proud NCAA corporate partner, presents great SEC rivalries. It's all about <laughs> Both unranked for the first time since 1979. Pre Herschel. Jacksonville 75 in the last 77 games. It is a great rivalry. Chaz Henry was a kicker in high school, place kicker, but he is the regular punter. And uh, Caleb Sturgis had a stress fracture in his back almost from the beginning of the season. And uh, they thought they might get him back this week, but he tweaked it again on Wednesday. Here's the handoff right side with Sean Ely off of a five touchdown game in the win over Kentucky. Five of them. And let's check this Georgia offense presented by Chick-fil-A. Sturdivant, Glenn, Jones, Gates, true freshman at right guard. Clint Bowling, 
There you got Green Chappas, the fullback. Caleb King uh, was listed as the starter, but Rashawn Ely opened the game in the tailback spot. Charles is the tight end. Second down and two. Ely is still back there. We've not seen Caleb King. And it's a Georgia first down as goes over the freshman. Canarius Gates for the first down. Defensively for Florida. Cato, Hunter, Sanders, and Lemons. Jay Howard is out for the game. A.J. Jones, Bostick, and Jelani Jenkins are the linebackers. And in the secondary, you've already met Janoris Jenkins, Ahmad Black, Will Hill, and Jeremy Brown complete the defensive secondary. First down, 10. That's Chappas, the fullback. Play fake. Murray across the middle deep. Had a man open. Orson Charles is tight end. High school teammates at Plant High School in Tampa, Murray and Charles. Well, after the interception on the first drive on first down, Georgia came out and ran the ball for a first down. Now, that is one of the bugaboos in this three-game losing streak for Florida. In the last three games, Florida's defense has been giving up an average of 181 rush yards a game in the last three. That's unheard of for a while against Florida. There's reasons for it besides rush defense, but they must prove they can stop the run first. Second down and 10. Here's the draw play. Ely, right side. It'll be third and long. This is a veteran offensive line for Georgia. The strength of their football team, well, besides, you know, the best player maybe in football, A.J. Green, but the strength of their football team is that offensive line and this running game for Georgia started to emerge in the last seven games of 09. The first six they ran for 90-70 game. The last six they ran for 216. So that's when it started to turn for Georgia. Third and seven here. And Murray will be in the gun. He'll move his third wide receiver wide to the left side. Blitz, Florida. Murray, deep right side, man coverage. Behind the intended receiver, Chris Durham. Oh, it looked like he was open. Yeah, Murray has gotten off to a little shaky start here. His first throw was picked off. Second one over the middle, he had him. And this one, Durham, outruns. This is a touchdown or at least a big play if it's anywhere in the area. And you can see Aaron Murray says, I, I know I got to throw it better than that. Now, here's the All-American punter, Drew Butler. Led the country last year with... Uh, an average of better than 48 yards, and he's up there this year as well. 45-5. Oh, Gets the snap. My goodness. Jenkins, fair catch, and he is nailed at did the he, six. Did he fair catch? Maybe. Uh, he must not have. I, he must not have. I saw something quickly, but obviously the Georgia player didn't see it. No. Nor did the official who's back there, Brandon Boykin. Well, he was shielding his eye uh, from the sun. See? I don't. Oh, he did real quick. One yep. wave. See, the officials are meeting on this. They're going to ask each other, did anyone see a fair catch? Matt Austin is the referee. Kick catch interference on the kicking team. 15-yard claim for the spot of the foul. First down. I think it's a good job by the crew. They missed it at first glance. They talked to each other, and they got it right. You know, in the olden days, Vern, they had to put your hand up above your head. This is a quick wave there, you know, and, you know, you can't blame anybody. I mean, it's a penalty, I understand, but you really can't play, play in the player for George on that one either. That's a punt returner's version of alligator arms. <laughs> he got an alligator by him. Urban Meyer, sixth season, Florida first. Three-game losing streak. Now it's time to take a look at our Home Depot tools for success. I'll go back to Urban Meyer, how he has used off weeks and tweaks in the past. Remember 2005, inserted the fullback to get it kick-started when he brought the spread to Florida. 2006, Chris Leak, he added Tebow for some power to that football team and toughness also. 2007, Tebow exploded, and he used Cornelius Ingram as his X-factor at the tight end spot. 
2008, remember they were struggling, Vern, and they moved Dempson right. Rainey from the slot to the backfield to run their option game. Last year, the H factor was Hernandez. He replaced Harvin. And 2010, we don't know for sure what it's going to be, but, you know, this tweaking stuff works a lot better when you're good and you have good players. It's like Shaquille O'Neal tweaking his free throws. They still don't go in. You know, if you don't, if you don't have skill, you can tweak all you want. You surprise me every week. I like that. <laughs> I like that a lot. First down and 10. Sweep right. Whoa. Great play. My goodness. That was Chris Rainey, number three. And that was Christian Robinson, number 45. Christian Robinson in the game, I think, because Akeem Dent is not. But look at that. Flies right over the pile and makes the play. Here it is. See, this is the hurry up when you don't get a first down. It's very dangerous. Remember, Auburn said they'd like to do it after a first down. Sprint out by Brantley, and the ball is bobbled by Chris Rainey. Well... Florida has had obvious offensive problems, but particularly in the opening yeah, quarter. Yeah, and I think that's the story of why Florida's defense and offense is struggling a little bit. Their people are running the ball because Florida doesn't have the lead. There's always consequences. One thing loves, leads to another, but Florida's lack of getting early leads has really changed their dynamics on defense. Got him! Again! Again! It's Demarcus Dobbs who is wearing number 31 today. And well, we'll tell you a little more about that in a right. bit. And, and Vern, we were told over and over by the Florida people what? It's not our offensive line. It's been the blitz packages, the schemes, our running backs. Well, the first two sacks have been the offensive line, period. And so on fourth down, here's Jazz Henry to punt. Fair catch called and taken at the 49. And again, here's the danger of the speed-up offense if you don't get an initial first down. That drive for Florida, 45 seconds. Mm. Well, Demarcus Dobbs wearing number 31 today instead of his normal 58. He does so in honor of Quentin Banks, a teammate, a senior, whose career ended because of a series of knee injuries. Georgia players won per game wearing number 31. No score in Jacksonville. Let's check in with Tracy Wilson. Well, guys, we saw linebacker Akeem Dent going out during that first series for Georgia. He came off woozy and was tested for a concussion. Mark Richt just going over to him to check on one of his leaders. I was told he is out for now, guys. All right, Trace, thanks. And, and that's good nowadays. You know, before you could talk your way back on the field. Nowadays, it, you have to be medically cleared to get back out on the field. Short field now for the Georgia Bulldogs. They have survived an interception on the opening offensive play of the game from Aaron Murray, intended for A.J. Green, a missed field goal. And uh, now they've got the ball at their own 49-yard line. Left side, it's Ely. Yep. And you can see Georgia has been physical up front, running the ball from the eye formation. We talk about the tweaks from Urban Meyer. Well, Mark Rick also tweaked. When they lost four in a row, he had his team dress up for a Monday practice, and they hit, and they've been hitting ever since. They're doing Oklahoma drills, and he has sold to his football team that physical football is what's going to win. And you can see Georgia up front is winning on the offensive line and the defensive line so far in this game. They've got a second down here. Center Ben Jones calling out offensive line signals. Here's the toss to Ely with Chappas in front. Gets a block, a kick-out block from Chappas. And he is stopped short of the first down. Let's go back to New York. Here's Tim Brandon. Vern and Gary, six unbeatens, all playing on the road. Four of them from BCS conferences, and already one of them in a lot of trouble. Roy Helu of Nebraska goes 66 yards for the touchdown. They've since added a field goal to make it 10 to nothing. One by one, these BCS undefeateds likely to go down, and it may be today. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. It's third down and three here. And Florida has hung their head on third down defenses for five years. They were successful the first time. Let's see if they can do it again. Two wide receivers left. 
One to the right. Caleb King is in the backfield for the first Another time, and it's throw. tipped. No, was no. it tipped, was it? I don't know. It sailed on him. You know what? Aaron Murray's hoping it was tipped because that was a woeful throw that time. All right. I think it was A.J. Jones that rushed in. Right, it was. Let's see what happened here. Boy, got a lot riding on this. Nope, nothing tipped. That just sailed on. Uh, well, you tried to help him, didn't you? I did. <laughs> I was giving him. Yeah, he has not thrown a good throw yet. Oh, boy. Janoris Jenkins is back. Drew Butler is on to punt. I thought that one had to have been tipped, obviously. And this one's into the end zone. It'll come out to the 20. Seven thirty-four to go, opening quarter. Mark Rick's team at four and four for the year. They're on defense when we come back. Whom you've met, named Tom Drake, All right. who's aboard a cruise ship in Venice. Not a bad spot. He's watching the game because it's streamed online. Yeah. I've heard rumors they do that nowadays. <laughs> I'm just, I'm catching up. <laughs> I'm still mystified by the process. <laughs> What do you mean you don't use an IBM Selectric anymore? Into the secondary, it's rainy. And let's check the Georgia defense. Jones, Tyson, Demarcus Dobbs, who is wearing number 31 today. Gamble, Dent, Doughton, and Houston. Houston having a great year. Here's the sweep, rainy into the secondary and to the 45 yard line and the defensive backs tough to get these obligations out of the way with a quick snap cummings rambo williams and boykin quick snap again here's brantley at the 35 i said across the 50 they haven't gotten that close yet it's rainy again well, you got to wonder what John Brantley's thinking, don't you, uh, Vern? I mean, you know, two games ago, he left the field against LSU with the lead. You no, know, they scored, went for two, made a 29-26. They lost when he was on the bench. Last week, he drives into the 25-yard line. They missed a field goal, so they changed the offense. Hmm. Hmm. Brantley, deep. Man coverage over the shoulder interception. Picked off at the 10-yard line by Brandon Smith, who has missed the last three games with a concussion. Just cleared to play this week and makes his presence felt here in the first quarter. You know, when you're going to let a ball go like this on the post, you have to trust that your guy is going to get, get there and make a play or at least knock it down. No speed out there at all. Look at the jog by your wide receiver. That is just not acceptable. Marius Hines, was it? Yes. That, I mean, they say they've recruited the fastest players in the country. That was a jog going out for a pass. Brandon Smith kept up his speed and made an over-the-shoulder catch. And so Georgia has the ball at the 13-yard line. Blitz. King. Caleb King back in the lineup after serving a two-game suspension. He was suspended for failing to make a court appearance relative to a traffic violation. Yeah, in between Ely and King, that one-two combination, that time Chappis didn't have anybody to block. I'd like to say Sean is a great blocker, but that time the Florida defense ran themselves right out of the play. That's a gain of 19 and a first down out at the 32-yard line, scoreless first quarter. Play fake. Murray. Overthrown. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. Once again, here's Tim. Earlier today on the College Football Today, my partner Spencer Tillman said it would be separation Saturday. Well, look out. Ricky Stanzi, three yards to Colin Sandeman. I was added a field goal. It's 10-0. Sparty has lost six straight at Kinnick Stadium. Back to you, Vern. Yeah. Sparty's having a pretty good year, though. This one going to be tough. Second down. Second down. 
Second and ten. King gets a good block. Gets around the corner. And out of bounds at the 42. Sean Chappas that time did have somebody to, to block. Yeah, this time the Florida defensive line did a great job of getting a stalemate on front. The inside three guys kind of get stoned up front. Do a good job, but the linebackers run right out of the play. Brandon Hicks comes inside. They lose containment on the edge, and King does a nice job of reading the play and making it a positive one. First down and 10. No oh, beautiful man, spin oh, move. Wow. It's a no Sean Marino move right there. Oh boy. Caleb King. He gets the ball. Watch Caleb. Come in, feels it, and spins right out of it. Jeremy Brown on a corner cat blitz that time. That's a corner he beat on that play. Nice read, nice action, and that's why those guys get recruited and they put four and five stars after their name. 25 years ago, I worked with Terry Bradshaw for a while. Saw a similar play like that. I said, boy, that was a great pirouette. And he said, yeah, and he turned around nice, too. <laughs> you know, he's done all right, though. Said Terry. Yeah, he has <laughs> it. Yeah, he's done all right. Black, number 35. Yeah, I think Ahmad Black and Will Hill are the best tandem of safeties in college football. They've got so much experience trying to run the ball to the edge here. Watch Black come up, take it on. Yes, he was in the box to start out with, but that's a safety that read it fast and made the play with his physical style. Well, in this series, we've seen Sean Chappas three times. He blocked air once. He had a great block a second time, and he whiffed on that one. And so here's the Drew Butler punt, which is taken inside the 10. Janoris Jenkins grabs it. It's a 42-yard punt. Nothing on the return. She is the most hated woman in Vegas. And Wednesday on the Defenders, she's also the client. Jim Belushi and Jerry O'Connell star Wednesday, only CBS. Well, we'll see with this drive if Florida sticks with this hurry up. I can see it, Vern. I really can see it after you get one initial first down. It's a big gamble to do this right out of the box. Here's the keeper up the middle, Trey Burton. It's on the ground. It sure is. It's on the ground. Still on the ground. Oh. And second chance. Florida gets it. Georgia had a golden opportunity. Yeah, Maurice Hurt started off at guard in this game, has moved over to the tackle spot. John Alapio has moved in. Ball's out, free, and I thought it was going to be Sanders Cummings who scooped it up, but he couldn't do it. And on the quick count, here comes Florida again on second down. So, big break for the Florida Gators. Demps carries this one. And they're going to uh, go no huddle again. Third and very short. Yes. It's Burton who will get the snap. And there's a little motion in the line. This might cost four to five. Looked like 67 John Jalapio might have moved. Yeah. I'll tell you, I, I, I give coaches credit for, for tweaking. I really do. 57 offense. Five-yard penalty. And Florida has struggled mightily in offense. They have no big plays to speak of. You can see the first series, 
Burton goes from quarterback to slot. In comes Brantley. Next play, it's a little bit of Wildcat. Bantley at wide receiver, Burton back at quarterback. But to put this in without a spring practice, mm -hmm. without any experience against low-level teams, just to throw it in this big game, it's a mighty challenge. Let's see if Florida can do it. It's now third down and six. Brantley, left side, nice catch. Up at the 25-yard line made by Frankie Hammond, Jr. Hey, he's a first down machine, Frankie is, but I'll tell you what else. You give John Brantley some time to throw, and this time the offensive line gave him some time to throw. Maurice Hurt did a nice job on Houston to the outside, and Brantley stepped in there and delivered. And after the made first down, Florida goes quickly. You like this tactic. Oh, yeah, now I do. Absolutely. After first down, I think it's a very effective offense. It just is Florida further far enough along to be able to do this. Now Brantley's off the field. This is the true kind of hybrid offense now with Burton in there. See the first three possessions. Now you got Amarius Hines, Chris Rainey, and Burton. Burton takes the snap. Hand off Rainey into the secondary. Chris Rainey, who is back on the roster now, having served a five-game suspension. He was initially charged back on September 14th with felony, third-degree felony menacing. It was negotiated down to a misdemeanor. He was given certain conditions, and uh, Urban Meyer saying he met them, and he's back in the lineup now. Here's the pitch, and a slip and a fall as Omarius Hines cannot get back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, good assignment football that time. Daryl Campbell took the quarterback. They're going to fake the ball inside to Rainey. Quarterback is tackled inside, and there's nowhere to go. Well, Marius Hines, by the way, was the leading rusher last week in the football game. On second down, Brantley comes near side, and it's caught. That's going to leave third and long at the 41 as uh, Trey Burton makes the catch. Well, Burton, multi-purpose, yeah. yeah. Pretty interesting, isn't it? College football, it makes it a lot of fun. You see so many different things in college football compared to the pro game. Give John Brantley a lot of credit what he's doing, moving in and out of the quarterback position and trying to pick up these third down conversions. Third and eight, four-man rush. Brantley, right side, he's got Burton. Burton's got a first down. So he can run it, he can throw it, and he can catch it. Trey Burton, who earned it. What, is, what does Kentucky have in common with these two teams? Mm. Well, Trey Burton scored six times against oh, them. Yeah. Well, Sean Ely scored five times against them. Effective. Kentucky didn't want to hear that stat. Did I know that. I, you know, <laughs> I guess basketball season, I hope they, yeah, they're over it. Here's Demps. There goes Demps. Well, for the year. Florida has only had six rush plays of plus 20 yards. But you can see when you get your speed back, your healthy speed back, you have the potential to break those runs. That is the end of the first quarter. No score in Jacksonville. We'll return after this message and a word from your local station. Certainly one of the great songs ever composed and uh, appropriate here on the final Saturday in October. Georgia, Florida started the second. Burn Lundquist, Gary Danielson, Tracy Wilson, Georgia and Florida scoreless, but Florida driving. Nine play drive. First down at the 35. Brantley back in and gets the direct snap. Again, he's got time and he goes over the middle to Burton. Burton circles, gets a block from Rainey, and he's out of bounds at the 21-yard line. And again, he had good protection from that offensive line. It looks like that Georgia secondary, they've been susceptible all year. Burton's going to come and just run a little circle over the middle. 
against passing quarterbacks. Their salvation on defense is they've been getting sacks. If you don't sack them, it looks like you can pick them apart. Here's Burton. He takes the direct snap. And up the middle goes Chris Rainey. Touchdown, Gators. Can't engineer a drive any better than that, Vern. Your quarterback was four for four, 11 plays. 20 yards for Rainey, his second touchdown on the ground this year. Back in the lineup after serving the five-game suspension. And that is the ninth touch of the game already for Chris Rainey. This is the dive play. Remember two years ago, snap it, dive right off the option play. You see Georgia is playing assignment defense, and Rainey gashes him right up the gut. That was the offense from two years ago. So it's a hybrid. Remember how all this started? Trey Burton's fumble recovered by Maurice Hurt. Ninety-one yard drive, eleven plays. The highlight of which, well, two of them. Maurice Hurts recovery of a Trey Button Burton fumble, and then the twenty-yard run by Chris Rainey, and uh, a very exuberant Urban Meyer as Rainey crossed uh, the end zone, running downfield and uh, showing some emotion. Seven zip, fourteen forty-one to go, and here is Zachary Brust kicking off. For the second time, this one will be taken at the eight-yard line. Boykin tries to shake the tackle and can't. He stopped at the 24-yard uh, line. Well, just uh, Gary judging from Urban Meyer's reaction when Rainey went in to score. I mean, he was pumping his fist. I would meant too. A lot. I would yeah. too if I was him. He watched every offensive play right. the whole year to get ready for this game. Now, let's think about this for Georgia. The stats coming into this game. They are 4-0 when Georgia scores first. They're 0-4 when their opponent scores first. Florida just scored first. You're saying that's an omen. Well, we'll see. <laughs> I just read the stats. I, I understand. <laughs> well, I'm here to read the tea leaves. Exactly. You know, I interpret. Georgia has not been able to spot anyone and come back and win. Well, and Aaron Murray has off to a very rough start. Yes, he is. Here's the toss right side. It's Caleb King. Well, uh, let's check in with Tracy Wolfson. Well, guys, you talked about Urban Meyer's emotions after the touchdown. He has been so intense, more than I've ever seen it. He's constantly telling his team, wear them down, wear them down. He just called over the whole offense. He got in the middle, and he said they can't hold up. They can't hold up. They're going to get tired, guys. Thank you, Trace. Tenth year as a head coach, Bowling Green, Utah, and Florida. He said... He's never been through anything quite like this three-game losing streak. Second down. A.J. Green starts in motion and pulls up left side. Hand off. Caleb King. Not much there. Let's go back to Tim Brando in New York. Vern, we started the day with four BCS unbeatens. By 7 o'clock, we could be down to two. Roy Helu again, this time 73 yards to make it 24-0 Nebraska. Meanwhile, Iowa's returned an interception for a touchdown. They now lead Michigan State 17 to nothing. Back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. Third and four here. 7-0 game. For Florida, it's quite simple. If they win out, they go to Atlanta. They have Vanderbilt and South Carolina, and they get South Carolina at home. Georgia needs to win today, and they need some help. Draw play. Got it. First nice down. Play. Yes, it was. Well, Aaron Murray, I mean, I, I tried to give him a little help up here by an an analyzing that he needs to stay healthy. But when you come into a game like this and you're 0 for 5, you got to do whatever you can on third down to get a first down. You can't play healthy when you're 0 for 5 at quarterback. Well, and Mike Bobo is offensive coordinator and quarterback coach, a former Georgia quarterback, telling us on Wednesday he can beat you with his feet. First and 10 after the Murray run. High formation. 
Play fake. Looking deep. He's got a man wide open. Tavares King. King at the 10. Touchdown, Georgia. What bad start. And what a move by Tavares King, number 12. Sixty-three yards, and the extra point coming now from Blair Walsh, who missed one last week, ending a streak of 119 in a row, a school record. But Gary, what a long, terrific pass. Yes, if you're going to throw the ball, you must account for the free safety. This time, I'm not sure who it was, Will Hill or Ahmad Black, but the free safety's up way too close. You throw the ball, free safety snipping around, Will Hill up there near the line of scrimmage, and you throw the post route, and you must throw the post. Jeremy Brown did not take away the inside. He probably thought he had a free safety there, and he didn't. Pass thrown by number 11, Aaron Murray. We are tied 7-7. Here's Tavares King lined up right, number 12. I'm going to play Howie Mandel here, deal or no deal. Tell me, <laughs> is this taunt or no taunt at the end of the game? Well, Georgia fans are going to say that's no taunt. But remember, A.J. Green got called for one before. So Mark Rick is going to nip it in the butt, okay? Listen, I understand it wasn't a big deal, but let's not tempt them. Let's not tempt the officials. And the official did a nice job walking up to Tavares and say, listen, that's enough. Okay, I'm not going to throw it on you, but he warned him. Well, we all remember the A.J. Green taunting call in Athens last yes. year. And that was the longest touchdown play for Georgia all year. Their previous long was 48 yards. That was 63. Here's the kick. Chris Rainey is back. And he's across the 20. Runs it almost oh to his own goodness. teammate, right? And then there was a Georgia man in the middle of it as well. When... Take another look. I think Wooten is the guy that gets him. Latavius I think Wooten. you're right, yes. Yeah, see, and, and the Georgia player was trying not to block in the back and, and get it. Was it Wooten or was it 47? It I was 47, say. Chad Gore. Okay. I, yeah. I had a flashback there and thought it was David <laughs> We're close. Yeah. 18, 47. It was a good tackle either way. Got the seven right. Out to the 31, Chad Glower, G-L-O-E-R, was the fellow. There's Jordan Reed, number 11, former quarterback, tight end, first carry. Yep. He, he's a, a, you know, the size type quarterback. He's the big guy that can play the power game. Now, is Georgia going to substitute here, Vern? That's the question. Remember, as Tracy said, they're trying to wear him down. Here's Reed. Jordan Reed, who's a tight end slash quarterback. Sanders Cummings makes the stop and Rainey might have been shaken up Tracy Wolfson saying he seems a little out of sorts on the bench Trey Burton back there now a quarterback I think well we've seen a variety of guys take the snap have we not never thought it'd be so hard to figure out who the quarterback oh was. man <laughs> Gonna give me one of those NFL jobs. Manning behind the center. <laughs> Brett Favre, 20 years. Are you suggesting there's a sameness <laughs> to the national? Well, at least you know what a quarterback <laughs> is. You know. I will say this: among all of our uh, <laughs> announced teams, you and I earn our salary. That's <laughs> right. I'm not suggesting that others don't. <laughs> well, here comes Brantley now. <laughs> Second down. Sweating, trying to figure out who the quarterback is. This is number 12. He's not known as a runner, but what the hey. Yeah, well, good job there. Yeah, protect himself. John Bradley on the carry. Slides in front of Akeem Dent. Yeah, he got what he could out of the play. A Dent who went off early because of the concussion, obviously, back in the football game. Third down. 7-7 seven, seven game. Burton. Oh, inside that time. Was it Tyson? 
I think so. Or was it Brandon Wood? Brandon Wood. Yeah, Brandon Wood. See, they do have some of the backups. Good job by Todd Grantham in there. Now, right at midfield, what does Urban do here? It's fourth and three. And if, if I was Georgia, I would keep my defense on the field no matter what. I would play either defense safe or defense safe for a fake punt. Steve Adazio we're looking at, the play caller. Well, earlier this season in the win at Tennessee, Omarius Hines took a direct snap in punt formation and went 36 yards for a first down. Under Urban Meyer, this Florida team, eight for eight on fake punts during his tenure. We'll see what he's decided when we come back. We invite you to watch Fantasy Football today to get the last-minute news and analysis you need to set your Fantasy League lineup. It's live every Sunday at 11 a.m. Eastern, only on CBSSports.com. I can't imagine that Urban would fake it after this play. I'm really surprised he even took a timeout, to tell you the truth. Right now, Georgia has 14 players on the field. <laughs> Anticipating well, what to do. Tennessee tried that, yeah, and well, it didn't work out. So now they're bad. down to 11. Three just walked off. And Chaz Henry is on. Logan Gray, flanker, former quarterback, is back to return the punt. Nice and high, Chaz Henry. Too far. Maybe too far, yep. yep. Too far. Yep. So that will come out to the 20. And that was a good stop by the Georgia defense, especially because Todd Grantham, their first-year defensive coordinator, went with his backups that series because of the wearing down effect that Tracy talked that Urban was going for. So Georgia, in a tie game, gets the ball back. There's Daryl Gamble, one of the regular defenders for this Georgia football team. Bulldogs opened the season with a victory and then lost at South Carolina to Arkansas at Mississippi State. And almost inexplicably at Colorado, they were in position for a game-winning field goal in that game, and Caleb King fumbled. They lost it 29-27. First down and 10 here. Nothing so far from A.J. Green. Carlton Thomas is in the game now. Play fake. And the pass left side incomplete. Boy, he had A.J. Green wide open on that wow. play right over the middle. Well, A.J. Green, and Gary, excuse me, this had that four-game suspension for selling a jersey to a man deemed to be an agent. This was his first game back. Yeah, and, and he really electrified the Georgia offense when he came back, but then he had a hamstring problem that game, missed a few series, and, and Colorado caught back up. He was wide open on that one, Vern, right over the middle, and I thought I could tell he was a little frustrated. He looked back, kind of put his arms down like, come on, I want the ball. No, you were making the point to all of us. They just need... To get the Keyshawn Johnson just give oh, the dratted oh, ball. That catch is made by Chris Durham. Yeah. And he may have gotten popped in the ribs. Yeah, Will Hill is up there. He made a great hit. And that's your job for your safety. This time Will Hill stayed very deep, but Chris Durham knew he was gonna get a hit. Watch him go snag this ball. And took a hard hit. And you know, Chris Durham is a pretty impressive football player. He was the go-to guy when A.J. was out of the line. And he didn't drop it, did he? He cradled it, and that showed me a lot because he knew that reputation of Will Hill as a hitter, and that was a perfectly clean hit by Will. It was by his shoulder, but Chris Durham held on to it. Chris Durham still down. 6'5", senior, who's having a splendid final season, but uh, in pain right here. All right, Tim, thank you. Chris Durham on the left side. Got up, trotted off unassisted. Has a chance to smile a little bit. Will Hill on the right. Hard-hitting safety for Florida. Yeah, I thought he did it right, though. He was uh, in the body of the receiver, not up by the head. Carlton Thomas still the running back now, so we've seen three. King, Ely, and Thomas. Quick flip right side, A.J. Green. One-on-one -on -one in the corner, a little stiff arm. Wow. My goodness. Little power. Well, you you could tell 
that the coaching staff for Georgia could feel the frustration from A.J. Green. He wanted to get involved in the game. Now, A.J. can go up and catch him. He's fast, a good route runner, but he also is a very physical football player. Boy, did he get him in the face mask, or was that the shoulder? I couldn't quite tell on that. I think the face mask. He's almost on the helmet there. Yeah. I don't know if he got the face mask. And uh, Tracy Wilson reporting from the bench that Chris Durham only had the wind knocked out of him. So he's fine. Now timeout. Georgia. That's their first. Florida's also used one. And the time comes with 8.43 to go in the first half. 7-7. Seven, seven. Rainey with the TV. Tavares King with the answer. A.J. Green back in the lineup. He served a four-game suspension, and you can see the graphic uh, exhibition of how much he's made, difference he's made. Yeah, great players at any level are very important, but in college football, these guys that could be playing in the NFL, like A.J., really have a big impact on these games. Second down, four. Thomas is still the running back, and he gets the handoff straight up the middle. Oh, boy, what a run. And he's got a first down at the 42-yard line. Well, that Georgia offensive line said, thank you very much, Mike Bobo. Four straight pass plays made it a lot easier. As you can see, Ben Jones, number 61 up there, getting a good block up front. Clint Bowling getting a good block up front. You throw the ball with success, you can run the ball with success. Four straight passes, and now a run for a gash. And it was spotted at the 41, a 13-yard gain. First down, 10, Georgia. Thomas, a red shirt sophomore. That's Sean Chappis, number 49. Play fake. Glitz coming. Got it. Oh, he fumbled. Uh -oh. Picked up by Florida. Jelani Jenkins scooped it up. Ahmad Black was there to force it. Yeah, a little cross blitz that time by this team. You cross the linebacker and the safety, and you just discombobulate Georgia. Watch this. Cross, cross behind it. It's the second guy that gets it. Black. One, two. The second guy, and Aaron Murray has to get out of this play. What did Mark Rick tell us, Vern? You got to take a bad play and don't turn it into a catastrophe. That time, if Aaron could have just held on to the ball, it wouldn't have been a catastrophe. Instead, Florida gets it inside the 30. Brantley drills it at the 25-yard line. The catch made by Deontay Thompson, number six. I, I really have to give John Brantley a lot of credit. This is not easy what he's doing, folks. Moving in and out of the quarterback position and delivering the throws he's doing. Picking second and third receivers takes a lot of skill and patience. Demps, right side. Turns the corner, got a block from Nixon. Goes for the end zone. There was holding on that play out wide. The wide receivers have been asked for Florida to block the perimeter better, and I think they held on that one. You know, Sanders Cummings indicate, indicating to us that's the call. Demps diving for the end zone was not in. Holding. Offense number six. Ten yard penalty to spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Yeah, it happened way near the sideline, right at the end of the play. Now remember, they've been hammered all week, the wide receivers, to block the perimeter. And this time, Deontay Thompson gets called for a hold. I didn't say he helped. I said he got called for a hold. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Do I sense a slight disagreement I, with the I call? Didn't, I didn't see it. No, so of course just, you know. I was, I was blocked. How about that? I'm just watching you tap <laughs> dance. That's all. First down. Burton, right side to the 15-yard line. That was Boykin who was taken down or not. Justin Houston makes the tackle on this one. 43. Again. And here comes Brantley. Yep. Here it comes. And a quick. And Burton still at quarterback. Brantley out in the Wildcat at wide receiver. Second down, 11. And this one's going to be a pre-snap flag. And Gamble has his hands up like I did nothing. Before the snap, false start. 74 offense. Five-yard penalty. Still second down. 
Moe Hurt. Well, in the open, we talked about Demps and Rainey. They would probably go back to them, and they have, right? I mean, Rainey has nine touches. Demps showed his speed. But since that kickoff return, Vern, Rainey has not touched it again. He's out on the field. Let's see if they go to him. Burton is going to get the snap, and he pulls it in. Runs inside the 15 near the 13. It's going to be third down. Kristen Robinson, number 45. With well, the tackle. this is very interesting. The red zone matchup here between Florida and Georgia. Florida has been bad lately. Georgia's been bad on defense in the red zone all year. 80% of the time when a team is inside the 20, they've given up a touchdown. 12 out of 15 tries. Brantley. And Mark Rick runs out to the 15-yard line and call timeout. I mean, he was a good 12, 15 yards. That's the fastest we've seen Rick move in six, seven years. Saved them five yards. They had 12 guys out there. We welcome you back to Jacksonville aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS, provided by Goodyear, Georgia, Florida. First met here in 1933. There were alterations made to the stadium, 94-95. So for those two years, the games were played on campus. Florida third down conversions, two of five so far today. And we have seen the Urban Meyer tweaks. Yeah, three quarterbacks. But you know, right now, for Georgia and Georgia's defense, third down was a problem against Kentucky. Kentucky converted nine out of 15 times. This is a huge stop for this Georgia defense on third and long. It's Burton, now Brantley. And that's Demps in motion. Blitz coming from Georgia. Brantley goes right, Demps, flag. Forget about it, bring it back, free snap flag. It's three penalties on this drive, isn't it? Prior to the snap, false start, 11 offense, five-yard penalty, still third down. I, I think this is pretty understandable, Vern. I mean, Florida has been challenged because of lack of big plays to do something different. It, it's not going to be smooth the first game. They're just going to have to live with a few mistakes. It's like a, throwing the ball as a passer. You throw it, you're going to throw some incompletions. They are challenging their offense to expand and do more things. Well, they have the open week. I think Florida had 12 men in the huddle here. I'm surprised they're going to get away with this and one. And Rick, Rick is back on the field looking at Matt Austin saying, throw a flag. I'm not sure what this is about. Well, I'm sure Florida, 25 seconds. Oh, I say not throw a flag. Bump the bump the clock. No, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm positive, though, that Florida broke the huddle with 12 players. That's what Mark was upset. I see. This is Demps. That's another penalty. I think it was Maurice Hurt that time, wasn't it? Inside. And it also means the field goal is much longer than it was before. Remember the field goal problems. Chaz it, Henry has missed one already. When they backed out of his range. Now it becomes third and 14 at the 18. Let's see if they just try to get six or eight yards here. Here's Brantley. Right side, man coverage. Is that caught? Yes, oh it goodness. is. Wow, Deontay Thompson. Can't do it better than this. A back shoulder throw and watch Deontay Thompson come back, adjust to the ball, and show people why a lot of people have considered him a five-star athlete. He's had problems with drops. Certainly not then. It's first and goal. Dents. Touchdown, Gators. Well, Deontay Thompson started going backwards with his holding penalty, and he pulled it out with the great catch. A little enthusiasm on that Florida on. bench once again. Florida doesn't have enough guys. Here comes another one. Oh, boy. Now, they've not been tweaking special teams during the open week. Henry 
Knocks it home. I thought that guy had graduated by now. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, John Brantley throws a wonderful ball to the back shoulder. Bump and run. That's exactly the way you have to put it against Sanders Cummings. They quickly line up. Hand the ball to Demps inside and gash it in. And John Brantley is saying, you know what? This sharing time ain't bad if I get to throw a few of those. John Brantley, who's had such a tough season, making amends today. Now 7 of 10. And uh, here's one of the tweaks. Yeah, it's been two tweaks that have been obvious so far in this game. The use of three quarterbacks. Brantley, Burton for the option game. Brantley for the passing game. And Jordan Reed for the power game. Actually, it's three guys doing what Tebow did by himself. Ha, ha, yes. Right? I mean, that's the three things Tebow did by himself. But John Brantley has showed why he's such a skilled thrower. Because you talk about the tweaks. They've done it every year, 2005 all the way to 2010. Those used to be question marks. But it's rotating three quarterbacks. And also the hurry up in the offense is an additional tweak. Remember we asked Urban on the phone, Vern, are we going to notice anything after the game as something different? And I was hoping he'd tell us, and he goes, yes. <laughs> Thanks, Coach. Yes, you five indeed. years. Good to know you still don't trust us. Well, they, <laughs> they did what we thought was a walkthrough yesterday when they arrived by bus here. And after they played touch football for, I don't know, 25 minutes, we were told, okay, fellas, great to have you here. Time for uh -oh, you to uh -oh. leave. It's down on the ground again. Oh, boy. And I think Florida got it. Oh, Georgia. Oh, my. That ball was kicked all around. Boykin had it, and he tried to dive on it three times. Boom. Just, now watch him try to go down, play safe. It comes out again. Boom. And it get, does it get kicked back to him? I think it almost did, but Akeem Hebron, number 37, appeared to have come out. That's, uh, we think he was the fellow who recovered, so Boykin who has four career kickoff returns for touchdown, not even close. Absolutely mandatory that Georgia puts a couple first downs on the board. Remember, Florida gets the ball to start the second half. 14-7 under six to go. Tavares King, number 12, starts in motion. There's a defensive switch. Sweep right side. Rashawn Ely is back on the field, and he doesn't get much. Well, you saw Boykin on that kickoff return. He's got one of 100 this year. And here is the duck. Which players are tied with Brandon Boykin for the SEC record of four career kickoff return touchdowns? Looks like a passing situation here, Vern. Remember, one of the problems for Florida is they couldn't get other teams to pass. In the last three losses, Florida only had three sacks total. Remember, the last drive was started by a sack fumble. Second down, nine. Ten. And off. Nice hole on the left side. The ball moved out to the 26. We're showing Elia, sophomore. Tackle number seven, Robin Powell. He served a one-game suspension for a driving infraction last summer, so there have been a few... Uh, problems with both these teams mediocre records you got a 4-4 against a 4-3 and one of the rare times you can say that uh, they have poor records both on and off the field third down three Murray left side that's a first down at the 32 yard line Aaron White made the catch. Let's go down to Tracy. Well, guys, we apparently, it was a little worse than just the wind knocked out of him. Wide receiver Chris Durham coughed up blood here on the sidelines. I saw the trainers take a look at him. They just brought him into the locker room for what they're calling is a chest injury, guys. All right, Trace, thank you. This was the play. Will Hill 
with the tackle and Durham down. High formation on first down. Four minutes to go first half. Across the middle, deep, in and out, intercepted. Picked off by Will Hill. At the 40-yard line, Chappas makes contact, and that's turnovers on back-to-back -back possessions for the Georgia Bulldogs. Well, this went right through Aaron White's hands. You gotta make this catch. You're trying to stay alive and present, prevent a das disaster. The tight end is gonna go right here. A well-thrown ball by your quarterback. Play action pass, one-on-one. -on -one. All you gotta do is catch it. Boy, it almost hit him in the head, and that's a gift interception. And this could quickly get away from Georgia now. Four turnovers last year, three already in the first half. And Florida takes over at the 41-yard line with a seven-point lead. 15 interceptions tied for the most in Division I. Rainey and Demps in the backfield. Brantley, play action. Oh, he's got a man wide open. It's Demps. Oh, baby! There's your quick strike. I thought he stepped out. I waited for a touchdown signal. And yeah, the ball was stretched out. Florida should kick as fast as they can. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, well, well, wait a minute. It's where the ball is when his foot steps out, though. And again, we're not going to have that camera down there. On those long plays like that, we don't have that down-the-line look. Look, this is about as good as we can get. I still think it was short. I, I would not, if I was doing it, I would say there's enough there to put that ball at the one-yard line. Well, our replay official is Jim Allison, who had the uh, unenviable task of four really tough replays in that Arkansas-Auburn game two weeks ago. Yeah, and remember, these are important. Remember Florida early in the year against Alabama fumbled one near the goal line on a play. So it's not a gimme score here just because it's on the half-yard line. Foot out, ball, short, but remember, we're on an angle. Right. But I still think, I, I think that's enough for me. <laughs> I'm going with them. I'm pretty confident in this one. You are? Judge Vern, how are you on this one? I'm going with you. Oh, I'm going to make it unanimous here. <laughs> now we'll see if uh, Jim Allison concurs. You can, you can lo use a, lose a lot of money trying to pick, predict these, Don can't you? Ooh. Well, you go back to the key phrase, and we all hear it yep. every week, incontrovertible, indisputable visual evidence. That's the, that's the key phrase. Since the early sacks by Georgia, the Florida offensive line has reestablished the line of scrimmage. Brentley had tons of time for him to wait for Demps to get downfield that time. Remember, early he had no time. Demp starts in the backfield, has to run a wheel mount from the backfield. Look at that protection. Nobody near him, and he delivers one. Usually those wheel routes are run by a guy nearer the line of scrimmage, but Demp's back in the backfield, another big play. And we await the decision, the conversation going uh, on between Jim Allison and Matt Austin, who is the referee. One more look, different angle, slightly. Yeah, this is, if you, this is if you don't know anybody and you have bad seats, that's the look you get right <laughs> Just in case, if you're not a big donator to the schools, this is where you sit on that. Yeah, you right got there. the Tennessee fans sitting there. <laughs> well, Will Hill's going <laughs> to... All right. Decision has been made. Here's the call. After review, replay shows the runner stepped out of bounds at the one-half yard line. The ball will be placed inside the one. Florida's ball, first and goal. Well, we Please both reset the game clock. 
to three, four, one. We both have a career after our announcing. Don't career. you think? Yeah. Yes. I'm sure we'll be quick hires. Pouncy, the center, out. Remember last time was a quick give to Demps, powered into the end zone. Burton is going to take the snap. I will predict no jump pass. <laughs> yeah, we all remember that one. Plays in uh, opponent's uh, territory, beg your pardon. Well, it's been one play for Georgia. Ooh. Here's Burton. There's a touchdown. There's a flag down. This was post touchdown, I think. Looks like Xavier Nixon and Cornelius Washington might uh, have been exchanging greetings. Matt Austin. The play results in a touchdown. Following the play, dead ball, personal foul, 73 offense. Dead ball, personal foul, 83 defense. Those fouls offset, we'll play the try. Over here to the right side, you can see offsetting penalties. I, I kind of thought, as Nixon was still jabbing away, I thought the snap almost hit the motion guy. I thought it was discombobulated to begin with, but it worked. Now Chaz Henry with the extra point. Cuts that one a foot inside the left upright. Well, John Brantley with the big pass to Demps, and then Trey Burton comes on for the TD run at left guard. Yeah, Gerald Christian right here is a tight end. Now watch, this is not correct. Watch the snap. They are not right here. They get away with one Florida. Oh, I, that was not the way it was drawn up. I'm just guessing that's not the way they practiced no, it no. back in Gainesville. Oh. 14 points off three Georgia turnovers. There's Will Hill who had to pick. Trey Burton with the TD. Even Bank Stadium, Jacksonville, Florida. 21-7 turnovers are haunting Georgia. And Florida taking advantage of them. I'll tell you how bad they're haunting them. Georgia has 11 turnovers in the last 10 quarters. That's two and a half games against Florida. Florida, two games prior in this one, one turnover total. 11 to one. Here's the kick, Boykin. Fumbled the last one, grabs this at the nine. And he is brought down as he gets to the 30-yard line. And it's time now to cue the duck. There he is. Which players are tied with Brandon Boykin for the SEC correct career record of four kickoff returns for touchdowns? You didn't have this one. Well, those two pretty good players. Yeah, no kidding. Willie Gall from Tennessee, Felix Jones, Arkansas, and Brandon Boykin. Three returns today for a 17-yard average. And, and what do you do if you're Mike Bobo and Mark Rip? They're not, they're not out of the half yet. Florida has two timeouts left. Do you throw the ball? A.J. Green, fake reverse. Murray has a man wide open. It's Orson Charles, the tight end, number seven. They were high school teammates at Plant High School in Tampa. Well, I wasn't here then, uh, Vern. You and Todd were doing this. Doesn't that look like David Green right there where he made the fake and turned around and stood there? I guess they still got that play in the, in the playbook. Yes. Todd would have said David did a nice job of selling that one, right? Yes, he would. Todd, uh, Todd Blackledge. Yeah. Yes. How were you? I watching? used to watch. You were watching. You we were working <laughs> at a different place. That's good. Same I like play. It. <laughs> it was first down and ten. 
High formation. Murray always in trouble. Flag. I'm guessing this is going to cost Georgia for holding. And, and look at how much different Florida is playing with the lead. Now those great athletes that sometimes people have said they look a little smallish up front are now pinning their ears back and going to get the quarterback. A little game to the outside that time. Watch this, a little stunt inside real quick. Watch Bostic. this, boom, inside. Never was able to handle him, and Bostic makes the cleanup tackle. I don't know if it was Duke Lemons that made the initial one. Was it Gates? Okay, Gates, Gates. Yeah, it was Canarius Gates yeah, who got called for the holding. A yeah. loss of three, second down, 13. Does it appear that Florida is running their blitzes right at Gates over the right side there? He's now out of the game. Mm-hmm. Three down for the Gators. Tretto is lined up as a linebacker. Bostick's coming. Little screen pass, and Caleb King could not get out and make the catch. Yeah, you can see Clint Bowling has now moved over to right guard. Sturdivant's over the left tackle, and this time it's just another jailbreak. At least that was a screen this time. Florida would like to get one sack here and take a timeout. Georgia would like to do something and punt. Third and 13. Ball just inside the 45. Murray started out 0 for 5. He's hit five of his last eight, but had an interception. He also fumbled once. Good block. Tavares King never turned to his left. Florida that time gave Georgia a changeup. A three-man rush. They dropped eight, and they jammed the receivers. Watch the jam. Once they jam them, Tavares never gets back on his route. Aaron Murray thought he was going to go back out to the outside. A miscommunication. That brings on Butler. And this will be... Uh, Drew Butler's version of a pooch punt. Janoris Jenkins waiting at the 10. See if he goes directional here. Well, he did that upside down kick where you kick oh, him yeah. end over end. Yeah. Oh boy! That was unnecessarily dangerous, wasn't it? Yes. Well, you recruit great athletes. Jenkins wants to be a great athlete. Well, just saw Drew Butler punt, and the ball was snapped back by Ty Fricks. They go back a generation. Kevin Butler was the place kicker for this Bulldog team, 81 to 84. And Mitch Fricks, who became a doctor, was the snapper. Here we are today, Drew Butler, the Georgia punter. Mitch Fricks, Ty Fricks, and there are the fathers and sons, two generations of Bulldogs. Ty Fricks is majoring in biomedical engineering. Quickly, right side. And it's Trey Burton, number eight. That's what, a, what a valuable player. We had him listed in our lineups as first athlete, and then we changed it to slash. I, I mean, how about, you know, anything, a natural. The guy plays fullback, slot, tight end, quarterback, option back. I mean, he's doing it all. And his, by the way, his brother, a, a highly recruited linebacker, just committed to Florida. Decommitted for Notre Dame and now is a Gator. Right. When we did the uh, yep. earlier this season, he was on his official visit to Notre Dame. Here's the quick handoff up the middle on first down after the 16 yard line. And this should get Florida out of the half. And I'm wondering, you know, if they even hand the ball off again. They might just be take a knee here. Urban's looking at the clock. Nothing fancy. Uh, they don't want to punt. Urban does not want to punt. 120 to go. And it's going to be Brantley back this time. And they just run it to the left to take the most time. I mean, just a sweep to the outside to take the most time as they can. Here's Rainey. Hit behind the line. Breaks the tackle. Georgia has one timeout left. We're under a minute. And coming up uh, as soon as the half begins, the Geico Halftime Report. We'll hit back to New York. Tim Spencer.
Tony Barnhart in the studio with them today. 44 seconds to go. Well, kind of surprised Georgia has Georgia, taken a yeah, timeout yeah. here. You could always block a punt on fourth down. They have one. Hmm. Mark wants a regroup at halftime. Yeah, I guess so. So, play clock is down to one. Timeout taken by Florida. Georgia opting to decline, stopping the, stopping the clock. Well, opportunity given, opportunity taken. Now Red Lobster presents today's Scholar Athletes because we've got a neutral site here. Sean Chappas majoring in marketing with a GPA of 3.4. He has already gotten his first degree. He's in grad school. Has a 4.0 there. And our scholar athlete from Florida, majoring in sociology, grade point average 3.0. Jeffrey Dapps, he served as a mentor at Lincoln Middle School in Gainesville last spring. Red Lobster's commitment to the investment of our future shown today by donating $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund. Uh, let me call one on myself here, Vern. I think Mark Wick was right. You know, by waiting and forcing the delay or timeout by Florida, now if they get a stop here, he can use his timeout before fourth down. So, GD wrong. Mark Wick had the exact right strategy. I'm going to mark the date. You got one? <laughs> Sometimes you could sneak around on that, too. <laughs> And on fourth down, did they count? It's close. There'll be a measurement yeah. here, won't there? Clock stops for 12 seconds to go. Mark will take a timeout if it's short. Now here comes the uh, the chain will be brought out. That much. Yep, Coach Rick right on it. Well, we're into the middle of the BCS I, conversations now. I hate to do it after I just said I'm dumb just to play before, but that's no, how I do it, that. okay? You know, <laughs> I kind of say if they all win the rest, what's it going to look like? So if Auburn wins the rest and Oregon win the rest, I think Auburn's number one seed, Oregon's number two seed, that's the game. But what if the top team loses a game? Michigan State, in my mind, should they go undefeated, is going to play Oregon. But if Oregon yeah. loses, I think it's going to be the one loss Alabama. If they get in that game, they will play in that game. If it's not Alabama, I think the next slot goes to the one loss SEC champ. Could be LSU, could be Auburn, but I think what's happened in that game probably won't be against Alabama, but they'd be in the game. Right. I think Wisconsin's got a good argument. If they run the table, one loss all year, I think they're going to get in the game way before the bottom two undefeated teams down here. I got them waiting a little longer. I got them waiting until basketball season. Before. For me, it's special circumstances before TCU, Utah, and Boise State get in, and I give the edge to Utah and TCU because they play each other. How long did you practice that? We had it actually for three weeks, but we finally <laughs> stuck in the <laughs> That was well done. <laughs> and here's a line drive no kick. No one's going to listen to me. Oh. I just said we should have took a timeout. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> paying attention. And that ends the half somewhat anti-climactically in terms of action on the field. But Urban Meyer's satisfied. Three turnovers led to 14 points for the Gators. Georgia. Tied it up 7-7. Let's go down to Tracy, who's with Urban Meyer. Coach, you told us this week the tweaks to your offense would be obvious. You went with the hurry up. Why? Oh, we just need a spark. And right now, we're uh, I, I think our, uh, the offense line is really the strength of our team. So ride that horse a little bit. 
We're motioning in and out of guys at quarterback and keeping off balance. And our guys are doing a decent job. It started slow, but they picked it up. You mentioned the quarterbacks. That's the other tweak, tweak using all three of them. How would you assess their performance so far? Uh, I haven't had time to you know, I think it's fine. You know, I think our defense is creating turnovers. And in a game like this, you look at the history of this series, turnovers wins games. That's going to be the key to the second half. Thank you. Good luck. Yeah. Right, back to you. All right, Trace. That's the end of the first half for the score, 21 to 7 Gators. Now let's go to Jim Brando in our New York studio. I love it. <laughs> Florida, Georgia, as we get underway for the start of the second half. And moments ago, Tracy with Mark Rick. Coach, Florida comes out with the use of all three quarterbacks and the hurry-up offense. How have you had to adjust? Well, we just know if they got uh, a certain guy back there, then we're going to have to play a certain defense. So there are some checks that we're making. Of course, they would go from uh, what would be their running quarterback and then, then flip their uh, passing quarterback back in the backfield. So we got just to make that adjustment. We got all the calls we need. We'll be fine. Murray struggling, two turnovers, very uncharacteristic. How do you get him back on track? You just got to relax and just play ball. Um, you know, the first one, they just did a great job of reading the route and jumping it. He hits the hands of another receiver and gets deflected. And now when he gets sacked, he's got to hang on to the ball. If he does get sacked in the future, he's just got to do a good job of hanging on to it. Thanks a lot. Tracy, thank you. That fella to uh, Mark Rick's left looked very serious. I didn't see it. You were paying attention I, I to Mark Rick. Yeah. yeah, I was looking yeah. at his lips there. He, see that? <laughs> trying to see exactly what he said. He would be uh, a sheriff. Here's Chris Rainey. Back to the 23-yard line. As Florida takes over, well, what, what mo most impressed you about Florida's offense in the... In well, the first half. just that they've taken on a lot, Vern, and they've changed a lot, and, and they had some mistakes, but Florida committed to it and stuck to it, and you can see they're using a lot of, they're use, basically using three guys to take Tebow's one spot. Right, and, and uh, they will good. continue. Yeah, they will, but I think it more the effect of the game, the disappointment has not been the Georgia defense. You know, Florida's been okay. The Georgia offense just hasn't done anything. Here's Rainey. And a quick first down for the Gators after the 36, perhaps the 37. Well, this time Rainey comes back into the backfield. That's where he ends up. He was split out into the slot, and you saw that time Brantley handle that snap that again went to his left. And now on first down, they come to the right side. It's Rainey again. This is a roll that we saw him a couple of years ago. Yes, yes. And, and you know, he, he's one of those guys that is a playmaker with the football. You know, that's the, the role when he came into the backfield along with Demps that changed the offense two years ago. Second down, 11. Maurice Hurt might have been leaning a little bit. And how about halftime trends, Garrett? Well, we talked about in the open that Aaron Murray had come on a little bit with A.J. Green uh, being his kind of safety blanket. But you can see today the two interceptions, one a good throw, as Mark said, the other not, and then the sack fumble. On the other side of the ball, Brantley, with all the stuff he's had to do, in and out of the quarterback position, he has thrown the ball accurately and made third down plays. Rainey and Demps have come through, and Florida's defense is back to being Florida's defense. That is the third motion call on Maurice Hurt. There's the, oh, that play looks familiar, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And here we go. It's Omarius Hines. Well, well, well. Well, Omarius Hines was the leading ball carrier in the last football game against Mississippi State. But this is the shovel pass. This is the Hernandez pass. Inside, pitch, and a double spin on this one. One spin one way, another spin the other way. How about that? 
And again, personnel problems as Stephen Wilkes is late getting on the fullback. Here's Burton, handoff Demps up the middle. Just handed this note, uh, Vern. Not a good sign. Another good sign for Georgia. The last two years, two years ago, they trailed to Florida 14 to 3. Last year, they trailed 24 10, so 11 and 14 points. They lost by 39 and 24. That's an ouch. Yes, they need to stop the bleeding quickly. Blitz. Brantley. Caught and. It's hung on to by Frankie Hammond. That's not grammatically correct, but you get the idea. What a wonderful throw, the skinny post throw. This is the one when you watch Brantley in practice, you say, this guy's got it. He's taken on this time by Bakari Rambo, lays the hit on him, the free safety, but Frankie Hammonds did just what Chris Durham did, held on to the football. Good that job. is a game of 17, Brantley sacked. From the corner, Brandon Boykin, number two. Gets him. Yeah, I think he was trying to go to Carl Moore to the right on this one. It was going to be a quick pass. Watch Brantley look right. Nothing there. By the time he comes back, he runs right into the slot blitz. That's a loss of seven. Second down, 17. Opening drive of the second half. And Burton moves into the uh, backfield position. Quarterback draw. Oh boy, he got popped. Well, let's uh, see where we found Trey Burton in the first Yeah, half. we called him Slash when we introduced him, and this is what he is. That one was almost a disaster, but quarterback, fullback, and of course he plays the H-back position, so he's caught the ball and run the option. Valuable piece of the offense. Third and long. Remember the last one. Here's Brantley, four-man rush, Georgia, left side, overthrows his intended receiver. That's Frankie Hammond, Jr. Now, keep in mind that Florida has uh, all kinds of place-kicking problems. Yes. And, and I, I, you know, I like that play call because I think Urban was going to go for it no matter what on fourth down. He doesn't want to punt. He can't kick a field goal this long. He was trying to get half of it on third down and go for it, the rest of it, on fourth down. It would have been a 44-yard field goal well, for Chaz Henry. That's the quarterback out at wide receiver. Yes, it is. Fourth and 12. Georgia playing contained defensively, and they do contain Burton. Yeah, they needed a stop. Was the snap to the left again? They threw the playoff here. Let's see if it was a snap from Pouncey to the left. That's been the problem, and I think that aborted the play. I think it was going to be that shovel pass option to the right, and Burton said, I got nothing to run, run to the left. No good. Aaron Murray not having a particularly effective day. For more on Aaron Murray, Murray, let's go down to Tracy. Well, let's go outside the huddle with the Georgia quarterback. He isn't the only athlete in his family. His 26-year-old brother Josh is a walk-on safety. He first, though, followed in his father's footsteps and played baseball. He was a second-round pick for the Brewers in 2002. They do have another quarterback in the family, though, his sister Stephanie, a senior at Plant High School in Tampa. Stephanie plays quarterback on the high school flag football team, a state-sanctioned sport, Vern. She threw for 42 touchdowns her sophomore year. Aaron said she can heave it 40, 42 yards. Very proud of her. And he'd like to make a mark in this ball game. It's been a tough, tough day. On first down, following the uh, fourth down stop. That one is complete after Orson Charles. Well, A.J. Green, one reception, Gary, seven yards. Yeah, I think in the, at halftime, uh, Mike Bobo and Mark Rick said, Aaron Murray, you got to throw the ball to A.J. We've got to figure out. We got this guy, even if he's covered. Let's give him a few throws. Let's see if he can grab it. They call him 50-50 plays, Vern, when either guy could get it. Deontay Thompson won a 50-50 play down the sideline. He just won. I think you got to give the opportunity to A.J. to make those type of plays. He and Chris Durham are flying to the right side. Oh, 
And that one's caught by Durham. He's got a first down. Spins. Knocked out of bounds by Janoris Jenkins. 50-50 play. Yeah, you know, in the first half, I think two plays can kind of sum it up. Georgia had an easy play to make right there. They didn't come up with it. But coming down the sideline on third and long, Deontay Thompson takes a 50-50 chance. Could have just as easily been Georgia. Florida comes up with it in winning those 50-50 plays. You, know, you hear it in basketball all the time. That loose ball could have gone to either guy. That time, Deontay Thompson got that 50-50 chance. Uh, see you know, the note. It's been a long time since Georgia over... Came a halftime deficit in this game. There's uh, Jelani Jenkins, number 43, making the tackle. Well, you look back, this has been a, a series of, of runs. The last 20 years have been owned by Florida. They're 17 and 3. The 80s, uh, Georgia won 9 out of 10. And right now, Florida is in command. Yeah, well, Mark Rick has won, you know, what, 77% of his games nearly, okay, right. in Georgia. But he's 2-7 and seven against Florida. It is what it is. Second down, eight. Green near side. Green has the catch. There's that stiff arm again. Wow. There's another one. Wow. Careful, he might get flagged. Yeah, they, they need to make him the focal part of the offense. Force Florida to tilt a bit. Cody Riggs this time was the recipient of the first straight arm. Ahmad Black is the recipient of the second. That was impressive. Well, it's third and three, though. They need this one. Will they go on fourth if they don't get it? They trail by 14. Third down. Officially, they call it four. Blitz. blitz. Got rid of it. Orson Charles. That's going to be a first down, Georgia. You know, sometimes, and I've said this often, sometimes there's way less pressure when you're down 14, 17 points. You start the game, you just don't want to make a mistake. This was a good, get rid of it. Get it in and out of your hands quickly to your breakoff. He read the blitz and threw it. It was all just reaction that time for Aaron Murray. And a fresh set of downs now at the 48-yard line of Florida. Haters reverse. A.J. Green. Justin Tretto. Well, we talked about the uh, somewhat mediocre, not somewhat, these are mediocre records by the standards of these two football teams. Georgia 3-3 three three in the conference. South Carolina won over Tennessee earlier. Florida 2-3, and three, but it's very simple for Florida. Yeah, they went, they control their own destiny. South Carolina controls their own destiny. Georgia has to win, and then they need help. South Carolina at Florida in two weeks. Loss of two, second down 12. And the South Carolina has to lose another one, too. Yes. Because the tiebreaker goes to South Carolina since they beat Georgia. Blitz again. Pass sailed on Aaron Murray over the head of Chris Durham. Aaron Murray's pass it to Chris Durham is incomplete. Third down and 12. Third and long again. Remember, last time it was third and long, Florida went with a three-man rush. They rerouted the throw, and it was an incompletion. Green pass, Orson Charles, a blocker in front. Got the first plus. Sturdivant was out to lead the way. That's a gain of 17. Throwback screen to the tight end. I thought it was defensed well by Florida. Little block and then fall off. Now watch Florida, they're there. They cannot turn it back in. Could have been a little holding to the outside on Cody Riggs, but they got away over there. Orson Wells, a good athlete and a high school teammate of Aaron Murray. Yes. 
Gain of 17 on third and long, and it's first down at the 32. A.J. Green in motion right, eye formation, and off. Caleb King, nice move at the line of scrimmage. Ahmad Black, number 35. Well, this is exactly the type of drive Georgia needs to get back in this football game. I mentioned that matchup between uh, Murray and Charles, Orson Charles. Fun story, I think. He was on his recruiting visit to Florida. He was taking pictures of Tim Tebow's Heisman Trophy. He took a step back and knocked over the BCS Championship crystal. $35,000 uh, trophy. And he called Aaron Murray, who was on his way to Gainesville, and says, guess what I did? They both went up to Georgia. But insurance didn't pay for the trophy. Murray. Holy cow. Looks like his brother. Holy cow. Sliding into second. His brother's here watching in uniform. Josh. Well, he wanted to throw it once, twice, and then he decided, I got to use my athletic ability. He runs away from those athletes from Florida, gets as much as he can, and gets down up for the first down. That is a wonderful play. There's Josh Murray, 26 years of age, a senior walk-on. Five years, as Tracy told you, in the Milwaukee Brewers minor league organization. He has been on the field a couple of times on special teams, kicking. And now it's time for this guy out here at Green. I like to throw to him. Into the end zone, Charles No. Seven on seven, nine yards deep. Ronald Powell, who was recruited as a defensive lineman, but has moved to strong side linebacker. Ball could have been caught, but I think Powell shoves him out wide enough. It would not have come down with it anyway. I would like to see that fade pass. Jenkins against Green. Two number one picks going against each other. Well, there they are on the right side of your screen. Jenkins laying off a little bit. Second down, 10. Blitz again. Left side with a blocker. To the 10 yard line, it's Caleb King. Ahmad Black, Justin Tretto with the tackle. A little power, just pull your back, your people on one side, come around the other way, fold around, follow the fullback. Chappas didn't get anybody, but it's enough to make it third or three or third or four right in that area. Another start of pulling and leading the way again. Third down four at the 10. In the slot, Green is in the slot real close. Pump delivers it deep over the head of the intended receiver, A.J. Green. It'll be fourth down. Ahmad Black was right with him. Yeah, Ahmad Black did a great job of not biting on the fake that time. A safety got the matchup Georgia wanted. Georgia wanted the matchup on the safety. Watch, hitch and go, and Black never bit. Forced the high throw. That brings on Blair Walsh, almost... Uh, an extra point, just a little farther. Walsh, 14 of 17 this year, make it 15 of 18. So he knocks it through, and Georgia gets three to climb within 11. 5.18 to go, third quarter. Florida leads by 11. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by The Home Depot, Chick-fil-A, LG, and by Liberty Mutual. And these beautiful shots of downtown Jacksonville and the St. Johns River provided by Goodyear, aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS Sports. 84,444 on hand. That's the paid attendance today. 21-10, 5-18 remaining in the third, and a nice drive put together with a couple of third down and long conversions by Georgia. Yes, the, the, the throwing the ball on the 
throwback screen was the big play. Right. There, there would have been no points had they not got that. Here's Blair Walsh. And this will be Chris Rainey at the 10. Oh, man, man. brother. Chase Vassar, a redshirt freshman outside linebacker. Chase Vassar. Well, a very significant event in the uh, athletic life of the Georgia Bulldogs. Earlier this year, prior to the Vanderbilt game, Ugg of the Eighth, otherwise known as Big Bad Bruce, officially installed in the passing the caller ceremony. He then took his spot in the doghouse and stayed there for most of the game. He's undefeated, 2-0. See that uh, his grandfather, Ugg of Sixth, had a pretty good record. Right side. Jeff Demps, number two. And Curry Rambo really ran that play down. You know, this Georgia defense never lacked for speed. And they can run back there. Demps is as fast as they come, but look at Rambo, the strong safety, run that play down and held it to almost no game. Well, Demps had 26 carries against Tennessee in that win way back on September 18th. But uh, injured his foot in that game, and he's only had 24 carries coming in in the rest of the games until this one. And uh, there's a poor pass by Brentley. But in this game now, Demps 7 for 33. Urban Meyer insisting to us that he is as close to 100% as he's going to be. He looks pretty good. Now, can this front four for Georgia make a play? Or will they have to bring help with linebackers in a blitz? Justin Houston has started 19 games in his career. He had 18 and a half sacks. Can he make a play? Four-man rush. Brantley off his back foot. Delivered to Burton, but far, far short of the first down mark. Akeem Dent, number 51, makes the tackle. Yeah, one-handed catch, but you know what? The pass rush did affect the play. You could see it. Brantley had to throw that one off his back foot or he would have had Cornelius Washington in his chest. On fourth down. That was a big stop by that Georgia defense. Chaz Henry. They melted the last two years, but they don't show it today, do they? Not at all. Brandon Smith playing for the first time in three games because of a concussion already has an interception in this oh, game. What a punt by Henry. Oh, my goodness. All the way back to the 15-yard line. Smith, oh, no flag thrown on that block. That was Brandon Hicks, number 40. Holy cow. I think it's Ogletree, isn't it? Number nine that comes, and oh boy, right in the ear hole. Ah, does he get in front? I don't think so. That is a dangerous hit, the one that you really have to be careful with. No call. Vernon Garrett. Well, Tim, we all know you well enough to know that you would refer to that as a trap game. Wow. Number one in the country. <laughs> They're going down fast, aren't Ooh, they? Ooh, brother. First down 10. That was a 61-yard punt and 16 on the return. Here's Murray. Comes near side, side arms it incomplete. Needed to throw that ball to A.J. Green. He's got his head down again. A.J. has too much long speed. It's on the bottom of the field. Watch his long speed. He's got him. You throw that ball out there, he's got him. Now watch him, his body language. See, his body language is, Aaron, throw it. Just let it go. Give me a chance. When you have 12 yards and you're the top-rated receiver in college football, you get a little frustrated. Second down. It's going to be close. They've only got nine seconds left. They haven't broke the huddle yet. And Murray looking at that checklist. He's going to try and get this thing snapped. They've got two seconds. They do get it snapped, a handoff. That yeah, wouldn't be good, though. Yeah, it's not going to be a good deal. That probably would have been better advised to bury a time out there, as hard as it is to do in the second half. But this drive is so important. Yeah. Well, you you uh, said to me during the commercial break. Yeah, this, this is the one they need really badly. Yeah. At least a drive. At least another shot at a field goal with their good kicking game in the Walsh. 
Deep into the third quarter now, it's third and nine. Yeah, third and long again, right? A.J. Green comes wide left. Chris Durham's in a slot. Ely is alongside Aaron Murray. Florida showing a blitz look. They are not blitzing. They're bringing three. Murray deep. Oh, he's got a man wide open. It's Tavares King again, who stepped out of bounds in front of Will Hill. I think Cody Riggs fell down on the play. The corner to this side. Let's see if he was rolled up or he just fell down. Because he was too open. Goes to jam. And yes, he just falls down. That's the breakdown in the play right there. Interesting, Jeremy Brown hasn't played in a while. It's been all Cody Riggs out there. Cody Riggs, number 31 for number eight, Jeremy Brown. Florida had their big play third and long. Now Georgia gets theirs on third and long. And they had one in the previous drive that screened Orson Charles. So now after the 30-yard gain, it's first down, play fake. Murray, he'll scramble. Goes right, chased by Hicks. And out of bounds at the 30-yard line. He's a good-looking athlete, isn't he? Yeah. He's going to get nothing but better. Penalty on the flag on the field, huh? A.J. Green was going down the middle of the field. I wonder if he got held down there as he was going. Holding. White. 16. 10-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Yeah, A.J. was in a tight split that time, matched up against A.J. Jones, and uh, that might have been where it happened. Just one hand. Just one hand on him. Didn't mean a lot. Punch right there. See it right as he came up. was actually on the tight end. As Orson Charles came out and broke from the line of scrimmage, that flag was thrown right away. Seven penalties on four to three of those motion calls. Illegal motions on Maurice Hurt. Boy, has Georgia answered the bell, huh? Yes, they have. Yeah. 2-10 to go, third quarter. First down 10 at the 22. In a 21-10 ball game. And remember last time they didn't throw one ball. Well, they threw the kitchen go, but they didn't throw the fade to Green. Carlton Thomas is the deep back in the eye formation. That's A.J. Green who starts. Now comes the blitz. Jelani Jenkins. Murray shakes that first contact and is tackled as he gets to the 19. Now let's go to Tim Brando for this Heisman watch presented by Nissan. All right, Vern. Well, it didn't take long for Cam Newton to have a Heisman moment in Oxford. Here from Cody Burns out of the Wildcat. Hoping to extend Auburn's perfect season. They've tied that game. LaMichael James will try to stay in the Heisman race tonight at USC and tonight on CBS College Sports. Andy Dalton will try to do the same for TCU. Back to you. All right, Tim. Thank you. That's not fair. <laughs> now he catches passes. <laughs> Second down, seven. And off of the middle, that's Ely. With Sean Ely, and he runs into Justin Tratto, number 94. Well, the Verizon red zone numbers for Georgia. 23 of 39, touchdown percentage. Only 59%, but that's not that far off the national average. 12 field goals, third and five. And Georgia for the game is five of ten on third down. An emerging story for, for Georgia to pick up these third down plays. They load up the receivers to the right side. One man split bottom of the green, uh, bottom of the screen. Screen pass. Ely's got it with three blockers in front. Oh my. And what a great job by Ahmad Black. But then Ely keeps his feet and picks up another five. Well, first of all, a great call by Mike Bobo. Nobody thought this was coming. Start the back on the left side, cross him over. Now, Ely has to have some patience. Slow down. Let your guys get a block on that one. If he just would have had a little of that patience and let it happen, that would have been a walk-in. Well, Ben Jones was out there ready to supply the block. They're going to switch ends of the field. 
Georgia Bulldogs making a game of it. That's the end of three with the score 21-10, Florida. We'll return to Jacksonville right after this word from your local station. Beautiful scene here in Jacksonville, Florida. It's Georgia and Florida as we begin the fourth. And the Bulldogs have a first down and goal. I formation. Ely is the running back behind Sean Chappis. Aaron Murray hands it off. Ely cuts back. Touchdown, Georgia. Decision whether Mark Rick will go for two. He can make it a three-point game if he makes it. But remember, if he misses it, it's a five-point game, meaning a field goal makes it an eight-point game. Walk it in, and he's going to go for two. Looks like his chart tells him go for two. You agree? If he makes it. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I think it's a little <laughs> early, personally, because even if they kick the extra point and Florida kicks a field goal, you're down by seven. Isn't one of the maxims never go for two unless you absolutely have to? It's a little early for me, but maybe okay. he thinks he's got a great play here. Okay. I was wrong last time guessing with him, so we'll go with Mark. Out of the gun. Roll out. Murray, nobody open. Finds it into the end zone, and it is picked off. Will Hill with the interception. Just don't understand why they didn't throw the ball to A.J. Green. That was where it was designed to go. You, you put it up real high and let him try to jump up and get it. Another look. To roll out to the right, it's like that Dwight Clark play. Remember, there he is, the back of the end zone. Put it up to the top. Gives up on the play a little bit too early. And now, ends up being a five-point game. 21-16 as we begin the fourth. I think by now the LSU fans have forgotten about Nick, don't you think? Oh, of course they have. <laughs> of course they have. I think have. that's water under the bridge, don't you think? I know we're going to ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> this is Chris Rainey, number three. Whoa! Wow. They're playmakers, I'll tell you. Alec Ogletree, number nine, one of fraternal twins on this team, is there to make the tackle. Well, of course, Rainey was not available for Florida for a suspension for four weeks. Comes back now and produces another big play in the special teams. You know, special teams are one thing, but you got to have the type of athletes to make them. Well, now, if you're, you're the Gators, you've had the ball twice in the right. second half and not much going on. Right. I, I think they just do what they've been doing. I mean, yes, Georgia has lit up here a little bit. Their defensive line probably got a good talking to at halftime, and they're starting to play again. Let's see what happens. Burton at quarterback. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, they get a modest gain. Yeah, I don't think either side changes anything. You know, I, I think, you know, Todd Grantham is saying, you know, they made some plays. They want a couple plays, jump balls we should get. But I think I feel comfortable with our guys and our system. Well, just watching Urban Meyer signaling his offensive team, keep it going. Here's Rainey up the middle, and he stopped short of the first down. You know, this is, by the way, first time we've mentioned this, the first time since 79 that neither team was ranked. This is Florida's longest losing streak since 99. Go back to 88 for their longest regular season streak, and it's first career three-game losing streak for Urban Meyer. And there's a player down at the 43. Demarcus Dobbs, we mentioned he's wearing number 31 today to honor his teammate Quentin Banks. Banks, a senior who had to give up the game because of a series of knee injuries, and that looks to be what Demarcus Dobbs is 
Could be an ankle, I guess. You know, and Vern, look how different as we, we look at that uh, injury up front. Just kind of rolled it, I guess. You know, in those three-game losing streak for Florida, they only scored four touchdowns, and two of them against LSU were drives of 16 and 17 yards. On third and one, here's Burton. Got it. Came around the corner, got the first down. Bakari Rambo, number 18, with the tackle. Well, we've seen Burton at quarterback, Brantley at quarterback, and Jordan Reed at quarterback. And yeah, this will be Burton again. On the depth chart, Trey Burton is listed at four different positions. Hand off Demps. Gamble chasing it. Bakari Rambo catching it. Very slight game. Yeah, that was strung out very well by everybody up front that time. Rambo made the tackle, but the defense set the edge, as Todd Grantham likes to say, and forced him wide and allowed those safeties to come up and make the play. Grantham, 10 years in the National Football League, most recently defensive line coach with the Dallas Cowboys, and he came in to replace Willie Martinez as the defensive coordinator, and they went with the 3-4 defensive alignment. Brantley in. Brantley pushed. That is going to be a fumble. And now it's fumbled back. Oh my That's the goodness. second time in this game we've seen that happen. Marcus Gilbert recovers this time. Oh Saw the bean bag come out as Brantley was hit. By the time the play action pass was made by Brantley, the pressure was coming from the outside already by Daryl Gamble. Now, scoop and score is what they say, but this time it's picked up and lost again. I think it was Marcus Doughton, wasn't it? Was, it was, yes. Gamble forced the fumble. Doughton did not recover the fumble. Marcus Gilbert did. Remember that 91-yard drive in the first half? You're right. That's right. Trey Burton fumbled. And it wound up in the hands of Maurice Hurt. That was inside the 20. Holding. Holding. Defense number 19. Foul occurred during the first run. Therefore, the 10-yard penalty will be enforced from the previous spot. Go back to the first half, and Trey Burton, one of the trio of men who blind up the quarterback, this was that play, Gary. Burton loses it. Gets popped out and gets bounced back on the play, I thought for sure. You know, this was a very, I wonder if the hold happened on the return. Because it happened really late. Well, he said on the first run. Part of it. First yeah. Part of it. So after the penalty, first down and 10. Brantley back. Caught by Burton. It's been all blitz now. Marcus Downton with the tackle. Sanders Cummings, number 19, is who was called on, and there it is right there. Yeah, and that's before Brantley yeah. loses it. There's the and, play. And that's a, that's a wonderful call, and also just one of those plays is just a silly call, just a silly play by Georgia defense. You're going to get called grabbing a guy every time. If you try to jam him and push him, you might get away with it. But that hold like that's going to get called. Second down, seven. Brantley under center. Pitch it. Don't get much. That's Jordan Reed, tight end, former quarterback, who's also played quarterback today. Another one of those gimmick plays. This time... The pitch and well defended that time. Team Dent just ate that play up. Last time Florida was in this position, they passed on the field goal attempt and went for it on fourth. They've got field goal issues with Caleb Sturgis. They're regular, not available again today. So it's third down, seven now, five-point game. Matt Austin, timeout. Georgia. Pretty sure that Georgia only had 10 men on the field. 11 minutes, 39 seconds to go. And now it's time for our Geico game recap. Florida scored first in this ball game. It was Jeff Demps. 
Getting the handoff and heading up the middle for 20 yards, 7 0. Georgia came right back, however. A 63 yard pass. Aaron Murray, Tavares King, who was open deep, 7 7 ball game. The rest of the second quarter, all Florida. Demps, a two yard touchdown, 14 7. And then Trey Burton got a touchdown over left guard, 21 7 at the half. In the third quarter, Blair Walsh hit this field goal from 28. Georgia then, early in the fourth quarter, got a four-yard touchdown run with Sean Ely. They went for two with a score 21-16. Aaron Murray passed on throwing it toward A.J. Green. It was picked off. That, by the way, does not count as an interception. It counts as a missed try. So no interception accrues to Murray, and no interception is given to Will Hill. 11.39 to go, third and seven. Burton. Oh, he's still struggling. He's going to come up short, about a yard short. Well, this is really interesting now. Yep. A field goal makes it an eight-point game, but you got a kicker who's struggling, okay? Chazza, your, your number one guy is hurt. Now, do you go for it on fourth down, or do you kick the 34-yard field goal? Well, this is the previous one. Remember, they lost a little yardage. Moved it out of range. Chaz missed it. They are singing, uh, bringing Chaz Henry in. Caleb Sturgis, the regular, a stress fracture of his back. So Henry, the putter, Urban Meyer can't look. From 34 yards, Chaz Henry has missed his last four attempts. And this one cuts right inside. He called on the draw, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> And I think the strategy, I wonder if Urban would have gone for that had it been a different score in this game. Now, eight points is a big difference. He might have gone for it had Georgia kicked the extra point. Chaz Henry hit his first two from short range, had missed his last four until he put that nine iron right near the pin. The Home Depot SEC on CBS is sponsored by Sonic, Geico, Verizon, and by Macy's. 10.48 in the fourth quarter. Urban Meyer was asked earlier this week if he had a sense of desperation about this game. He said, no, that's too strong. Urgency might be a good word. Well, it is a game of elimination, essentially, as we're in the fourth quarter, and Florida leads it 24-16. They had a 21-7 lead at the half. The third quarter, dominated by the Bulldogs, clawed back in it within 10. They opted after their last touchdown to try for two. It was unsuccessful, and now Florida just countered going almost the length of the field, and Chaz Henry, the punter, on in place of Caleb Sturgis ended a drought of 0 for 4. Now here is Zachary Bruss, the walk-on from Jacksonville. Playing in his first game ever for the Gators. He kicks it off to Brandon Boykin. No touchdown. Kickoff on that one. Now let's go back to the studio for this John Hancock update. The shootout is on in Oxford after a 68-yard touchdown run by Ontario McCaleb gave Auburn the lead. Watch this pass from Jeremiah Masoli, an even greater catch by Markeith Summers. They're tied at 14. In a strange way, Masoli could be helping his old team, Oregon, if the Rebels pull off the upset, Vern. We understand that, Tim. Of course, Masoli kicked off the Oregon team and... Uh... Houston Nutt, you know, Houston Nutt has a reputation well-deserved, I think, whether Arkansas or Ole Miss for coaching his team well when he's an underdog. I agree. First down, left side, caught Durham. And he's got a first down, it would appear, yes. Mark is out at the 38-yard line. Ronald Powell was defending. Well, if you're Aaron Murray, you'd think back and say, I've been here before. Remember the Arkansas game early? It was 24-10. Murray led two fourth-quarter drives to tie that game with, what, 50 seconds left? And then Ryan Mallett hit the big touchdown pass for Arkansas to win that game. So he's been here before. Still 
Still, A.J. Green, 12 total yards receiving. Extraordinary. That pass complete out to the 48-yard line. That's Tavares King. I, I wish I could say that Florida was doing something unique to him, like doubling him or taking him out of the game. I, I, I think that you just got to kind of call a play for him to the outside and let him battle for a couple balls. Well, certainly on the last play, Murray never looked his direction. And uh, he's been thrown to five times, two receptions. 12 yards. I mean, I want to give some credit to Janoris Jenkins, the first play of the game, but he hasn't been matched up with him the whole game. No. He is now. Blitz. Good pickup. Murray, double pump, goes deep, has a man, Orson Charles to the 29-yard line. Wow. You know, I think there might have been some communication from back in high school on this one. Coming out, Charles is going to come right here. Now watch when this ball is thrown. We can freeze it right before he lets it go. Watch. He's going to lob the ball back here. And then Charles goes. He did not know Charles was going to go there. I think they were on the same page, just like Plant High School. He knew he was going to go there. Plant High School in Tampa. And they both wound up leaving Florida, both recruited by Florida. And here they are hoping to lead a Georgia comeback. It's one-on-one -on -one coverage out there. Play fake. Good block by King. And there's the catch. There is the touchdown. High school teammates again. Murray to Orson Charles. Try for two coming. Well, they didn't have a smorgasbord of options available, so they found the tight end. And now they are within a two-point try, successful of notching this one. So no brainer this time. They gotta go. For oh yeah. A.J. Green, bottom of the screen. King is up to the top. How about that call? That's for two. Aaron Murray, we're notched at 24. I think the mistake is made right here on the play action pass. That's Brandon Hicks. He needs to help the outside technique. Watch Hicks. Watch how much he gets caught up inside. He never makes his drop, and that's a wide open play to the backside. No help from a linebacker. Outside technique from the song safety. And then last time it was a pass. This time, they said, uh-uh, Aaron has been running the ball well, let's try another one. And Aaron Murray has shown why he was the number three rated quarterback coming out. He's done it with his feet and his arm, and he's brought him from behind. Well, this is almost too obvious, but the sun's gonna set on somebody's aspirations before this one's over. Aerial coverage of the SEC on CBS provided by Goodyear. Watch the touchdown. Yeah, Caleb King should get some credit for this. They slide the line one way. Now coming from the left side of your screen, after the fake, he goes down low and takes out A.J. Jones and cleans it up for Aaron Murray to turn to his high school teammate. Two straight passes, 11-7. to seven. It's lucky either way. 7-11 or 11-7. Orson Charles has surpassed 100 yards in receptions for the first time in his Georgia career. He's got six for 108. And it's really nice the way Aaron Murray has settled down into this football game. You know, most guys just kind of wilt when they make a few first half mistakes. He has not. At 24, here's the kickoff. Chris Rainey is the deep man. He'll grab it at the four. Knocked down at the 25. Derek Owens, number 20, with the tackle. 
I think there's a little, it's more than elimination game. It's desperation game. When you're looking at three and four losses on your schedule, you're feeling, you're knowing what this loss will do to you. This is all out football here today for these two teams. Now well, here's John Brantley, whose uncle Scott was inducted yesterday into the Georgia Florida Hall of Fame, joining Zeke Bratkowski. Knox Culpepper of Georgia. Here's the handoff. And it's Chris Rainey. Wilbur Marshall, one of the great defensive players ever in Florida history, was the fourth player inducted. I'll tell you, that front three or four or five, whatever it is, including the outside linebackers, are winning the battle of the line of scrimmage and making some plays. Again, Cornelius Washington just won that play. Three wides to the right. It's second down and nine. Georgia brings four. Brantley. Beautiful throw. Yes, it was. It looks like he's picked up a first down at the 36-yard line. Omarius Hines, number 82 with the tackle. Brantley saying, you know, just give me some time. I did it the last two weeks. I had the last drive against LSU. I had the last pressure pack drive against Mississippi State. I hung it right in there. I can do it again. Burton hands it off on first down and 10. We're under the eight-minute mark, tied at 24. That's happened for me before, Burn. You, get, you, you, you take your team down there, you kick a field goal, you got the lead, and you watch the other guy take it back the other way. It's tough. John Brantley for the day, 12 of 17. Was intercepted early. Back to throw again. Omarius Hines. Oh, boy. Almost broke it big. There's a helmet that goes off. That's Hines' helmet. One of the strongest football players on Florida. We've talked about this before. They kind of call him the freak, okay? He started at tight end. He's been a option rusher. Scored a touchdown on the option last week. And he just does not go down easy, does he? Ooh, little mm. elbow there. Looked like a keen dent might have been uh, in the middle of all that. First downs are even 20, or not quite even. Difference of one, 21 20. Near midfield in a tie game with 7 6 to go. Trey Burton, foot race. Burton to the 20. Burton flies and in for the touchdown. Go for one. 51 yard gain. He just fouls. It's the counter for the quarterback. Fake and keep. Foul the pulling guard. And that's a little bit like we saw with Cam Newton. These running quarterbacks from the spread. Those are tailback plays called for the quarterback. They'll take a look, and this one I don't think there's much doubt. No, but it's such a big play. I think it's worth a look, and well, he did cross. Yeah. Yes, okay. he did cross. Ball crossed before the knee hit. Yep. Another look. He was chased by Sean Williams, number 36. Got into that foot race down the right side. How about these kids coming into college football nowadays, huh, Vern? All over college football, they can all run. His previous longest run this season was 19 yards. He tacked on a 51-yarder to break the tie. Well, he is he is a terrific all-round athlete. Well, you have to hand it to the Florida coaches. I mean, we'll talk about George in a second. They're hanging in this game wonderfully. But the Florida coaches needed to juice this offense. And they came up with something here. You know, running three quarter. We talk about two quarterback systems. They're using three. After of further review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. Touchdown. And so the extra point coming up for Urban Meyer and the Florida Gators. Henry's been pretty safe on extra points. He hasn't missed one of these. Holder is John Crowfoot, number 47. Got it. 
Well, that 51-yard romp by Trey Burton, worth another look. Well, Florida has run the ball 45 times in this football game, and Brantley is 13 for 18. That's a really nice balance. That is the 10th rushing touchdown this year for Trey Burton. He's chasing a mark set by a pretty good football player in 1987, Emmett Smith. Well, not only is it a challenge for Aaron Murray and the Georgia offense, how about the Florida defense? They haven't stopped them once. They've well, scored every possession. Well, the last uh, three possessions in the second half, 15 plays and a field goal, eight plays and a touchdown, four plays and a touchdown. Yep. Just to underline your point, here's Brandon Boykin. And he can return it. He's got a chance. Now he's got a better chance, and he trips at the 45. And he was tripped by Zachary Bruss. The walk-on. Oh, my. <laughs> Number 98 couldn't get on the bus two weeks ago. Now he's the last guy that can save a touchdown. Boykin could have just made it five. And watch this. One shoelace. But a big return nonetheless. 52 yards for Boykin. There's Brust. If you would have told me prior to this game... And A.J. Green had two catches for 12 yards. I'd say it's a blowout. Look how much better Aaron Murray has got distributing that ball around the field. Looks for Green. There's Green down the middle of the field. It's incomplete at the 30-yard line. Now, Janaris Jenkins did a wonderful job on that one. He cut inside Green. Green's break, Vern, was not very straight. It was too far upfield and allowed Jenkins to come inside, had one hand on one side and one on the other. He got away with it. If A.J. would have broke sharply, more like 90 degrees instead of like 115, 20 degrees, there would have been no way for him to make the play. Second and 10 in this half, only five misses for Aaron Murray. Blitz. Inside screen, dropped. Third and 10. Yeah, a little flag out there, too, right in the middle of it. Aaron Murray's pass intended for Washani Lee is incomplete. Umpire threw the flag. There you are. Preliminary signal of holding. I think, is Urban Meyer going to turn this down? Looks like he might. Holding. holding. Offense, 61. Kelly's the climb. Third down. Now he'll roll the dice with his defense. Yeah. It's not one down, though. It's two downs to pick up 10 yards. I would assume that Georgia would go for it, barring a sack on the play. Third and 10. Ben Jones, outstanding center. We'll snap it back to Aaron Murray. Blitz again. Down the middle it goes. A.J. Green! Oh, my goodness! Oh, my goodness! Coming from the left side, watch this! He just lays out two big-time players going against each other. Jenkins doing about as well as you can do. And A.J. lays out. You know what Aaron Murray's saying? I just got to throw it near this guy. Holy cow. First down, 10. Hand off. This is Caleb King. At the 10. Caleb 
Caleb King, last time we showed you his block. This time I'm going to show you his patience. Inside that offensive line, pulled by Gates. Follows Gates. Wonderful job by Canaris Gates, the freshman that time, to find someone. And wow, did Caleb King just stay there, be patient, and hit the hole. First and goal just inside the 10-yard line. A.J. Green back in the game. What a play. <laughs> William Green, number 96. Just love watching all these great athletes compete out here. Isn't this something? One in, one out. Good players on both sides. You got to stand up, compete, don't back down because they got good guys too. William Green with the tackle for loss. He lost five at second and goal at the 15 with five minutes remaining. In the slot this time for A.J. And Charles is split out. So is Chris Durham. Tavares King, top of the screen. Here they come. Indeed. Left side, King, no. Wow. You sound surprised. Well, no, I, I know that's exactly where you had to throw the ball. I'm just surprised that this one wasn't caught. Did I miss something here? Yeah, he nope. should have had that yep. one right. That almost hit him in the head. Cody Riggs again on for Jeremy Brown, and we were told, Tracy uh, let us know earlier in the half, that nothing wrong physically with Jeremy, Jeremy Brown. Riggs has played most of this half. Third down. And last, goal. Last time it was the blitz. This time it doesn't look like it. Three down. They bring four. Into the end zone. <laughs> Touchdown! You pronounce it A.J. Green. I guess they were just saving it. And Aaron Murray did exactly what you have to do. You throw it right at the back of the head of the linebacker. Bostic was right there. Ahmad Black was right there. Will Hill was right there. But so was A.J. Green right there. Ty Fricks will snap it back. Blair Walsh, Butler's hold, with 4.36 remaining in the ballgame. We're tied at 31. He threw it right at the back of the head of Jonathan Bostic. They had him bracketed. This time, Aaron Murray said, I'm throwing it to my guy. Watch this. He's going to throw it right at the back ahead of this guy. Got a matchup, but he's got help deep. Throw it right at the back of his head. He does. Right over the top of his head. The two safeties can't get there. If you throw it any higher, they're going to get it. The safeties. That's how you're taught to do it. And then there was the matter of holding on to the ball when you knew you were going to catch it. Well, this one might be remembered for a long time. 4.36 to go. Georgia has just marched back to tie this up on a catch from A.J. Green after a great third down catch to keep the drive alive. Florida had a 21-7 lead. It was tied at 24 all, and then they went out on top 31-24, and the Bulldogs came right back and notched it. Well, remember Aaron Murray's start, and remember he's a freshman, and recall that he's from Florida. Well, now he's thrown for over 300 yards in this football game. Blair Walsh with a kick. Chris Rainey is back. This one will go three yards deep, and he'll bring it out. And he breaks a tackle to get across the 35, out to the 37. Well, this ball was delivered between, I think, the two best safeties in football, two big hitters, Will Hill and Ahmad Black. They both deliver. They both hit him. But they don't jar that football loose. There was a delay on the touchdown call from two officials to make you know, sure that he had control. You know of what the ball. Georgia fans are cheering right now? They're, they're chanting, lock out, lock out, NFL lock out. They want him back for another year. <laughs> <laughs> First down. Here's Burton. Comes left. Out to the 40. 4.23 to go. 
Keontae Tripp, number 75, one of the backup defensive linemen for Georgia. Florida has all three of its timeouts left. Georgia has used one. Second and six. Brantley, the quarterback now. He delivers on a rope. That's going to be close for a first down at the 46. Omarius Hines with the tackle. I'm really smiling about all those people that thought John Brantley doesn't have that big league arm we all talked about prior to the season. If you give this guy time to throw, he's as good as anybody throwing in college football. And look at the uh, mark he set today, 14 of 19 for 176. This is first down 10. And it's Trey Burton for a couple. Well, we're tied 31. Florida has lost three in a row, but they control their own fate in the SEC East. If they win this, if they beat Vanderbilt, if they beat South Carolina, they will be in Atlanta. Georgia has won three in a row to climb back to four and four. They need to win out, and then they need some help. Somebody's got to whip Carolina because South Carolina has a tiebreaker edge over the Bulldogs. Brantley under pressure. Daryl Gamble, number 50. That had to be a busted assignment. Was, did they grab somebody up front? Did something happen differently? Because Gamble runs right through there it. There is a flag. Two linemen take the same rusher. Pouncey. Urban Meyer looks like a lawyer for the defense out there. I, I, I tell you, you could see the two linemen from Florida take one man and turn Gamble loose. Florida for the offense. There we go. Maybe. Prior to the snap, false start. Oh. 73 offense. Five yard penalty. Still second down. Well, that's, a, that's a break for Florida. They get to replay the play and disallow the sack. Xavier Nixon, watch him lean back. Top guy right there. Did he go? Barely, barely leaning back. Both the center and guard take one player and turn Daryl Gamble loose. That's a big play. Instead of third and long, it's second and 15. That is the fourth fall start penalty. Six fall start penalty. Brantley steps up across the middle. Caught. Frankie Hammond. That's a first down. He's throwing strikes, I'll tell you. Put it right on the five that time. And he also threw it between the hashes. Good protection, four-man rush. Pouncey switches off, clears the lane, and throws the ball in the middle of the field. Risk-reward over the middle of the field. If you can throw that ball in the middle of the field successfully, as we look at Chaz Henry, you know, it always finds it. When your weakness is something, it always goes to your weakness, does it? Chaz Henry there, does he going to have to kick the field goal to win it? On first down from the 40, here's uh, Rainey. Play fake, Brantley. Pumps once, settles for the safety valve. It's Rainey out in the flat, and he gets popped. Marcus Doughton, number 38, makes the tackle. Yeah, the, the other good thing I think that's happening for Florida is the drive is eating the clock. I think Urban would just assume this would be the last play of the game. Either it's going to be a field goal or a touchdown. He does not want to give Aaron Murray and Georgia and A.J. Green back that ball at all. Second down 10. 1.45 to go. Florida has all three timeouts left. Here's the option. Burton cuts it up the middle. He's going to be stopped at the 36. It'll set up third and five or perhaps six. Akeem Dent makes the stop. Timeout. Nope. I, I don't think so. I don't think so. No timeout. All right.
Third and five. Brantley with a lot of time again. It's in and out of the hands of Carl Moore, number nine. Well, here we go. This is the gray zone right here. What do you do? If you don't make it, you're giving Georgia and Aaron Murray the ball in pretty good field position with a great field goal kicker. Chaz Henry in high school kicked 152 yards. Oh, they're, they're don't you think they're going to punt here? Are they going to try to kick a field goal? I don't know. It would they, be 52. I think they're that either, either going to go for it or they're going to punt. Now, remember, if they don't make it, though, Walsh is one of the best kickers in college football. Chaz Henry said, I could kick it that far, coach. If they try the field goal, 52 yards. Oh, man. This was against Mississippi State. This was Chaz Henry, and it was wide right. Got plenty of lay. It's the accuracy. Delay of game. Well, now there's no issue. Right. You either go for it or you punt it. Oh, they're punting. Yeah. Well, that's what I would have done anyway. There, I, I, you can't chance it. Georgia's field goal kicker's too good. Here's Henry. Logan Gray. That looks perfect. That looks perfect. It is. Down inside the five. And now here's the cool part. Florida has three timeouts. They can use them and still get a field goal try that isn't as earth shattering if they miss it. Georgia needs one first down. Well, we're a long way away from Blair Walsh getting a chance to win this thing. Uh, in right, now, right now, Mark Rick yeah. is going, give me a first down, guys. I got to have a first down. Because a punt here could be a field goal try. And if they fair catch, you get a free kick. Aaron Murray, has he earned Mark Rick and Mike Bobo's trust to throw the ball? Not on this play. King. Timeout, Florida. They have two left. So if you're Mark Rick, who sat in on every offensive meeting this year, are you saying, guys, I don't believe we can run it? They're going to load the box. I don't believe we can run it with just a normal play. We're going to have to do something different. Quarterback draw, screen, quick slant, something. Play action pass to the fullback. And there's Terrell Austin giving the directions of the Florida defense. Aaron Murray started out bad. First play of the game, Janoris Jenkins. A little good. 63 yards. And then the sack. Kind of a bad break there. The ball was kicked out of his hand on the play. And he comes back to his former high school teammate and puts Georgia back in the game. Second down eight at the six. Will they slip the fullback out in the flat? Yes. Tipped, Tipped. Yes, incomplete. Was. That stops the clock with 44 seconds to go. He was going to Orson Charles again. Had him too. Had him matched up with Duke Lemons, a defensive end slash outside linebacker on the play. Third and eight. Well, let's find AJ. Bottom of the screen. Yep. Your best guy against their best guy. Florida has three down. They'll bring five. Handoff King. No, sir. It's going to be fourth down. Progress is... Whistled inside the 10. And the clock stops with 37 seconds to go. Florida calls timeout. They have one left. Need up two yards. 
yards, fourth down and six. Georgia badly needed one first down. Yeah, they did. That incomplete pass, by the way, that was tipped by A.J. Jones saved the timeout. It sure did. Also saved the first down. Tonight on CBS, it's a night of drama and mystery beginning with CSI, followed by back-to-back -back new editions of 48 Hours Mystery. That's tonight on CBS. Well, you've got an All-American punter in Drew Butler. That's John Brantley who's going to get one more chance. Butler, whose dad Kevin was a putter here in the early 80s. And Chaz Henry is the place kicker now because of the injury to Caleb Sturgis. So here we go. And he hit a good one. Nice and high. And the fair catch taken at the 42 with 30 seconds Go. That was a clutch punt by Butler right there. He knew he had to have a high one. It didn't want to return on it, and he had a beautiful one. Florida has one timeout left. Georgia has two. You know, I, I think Henry says, you know what, I'm not too nervous on a tie game kick. Give me a 50-yarder. I'm not nervous on one of those. They need about... Oh, 20, 25 yards, 30 yards maybe. Mike Pouncing will snap it back in the shotgun. This has been a problem for Florida so far this year. Thought they had it corrected. We've seen a couple of errant snaps today. John Brantley has had a great day. Snap a little low. Brantley steps up. And it's dropped by Frankie Hammond. 24 seconds to go. Well, Chaz Henry's career-long at Florida is 39 yards. Mentioned as a high school senior in Dallas, Georgia, by the way. He hit one at 52. Yeah, that's that's ones he's made, though. He can kick it farther than that. Okay. He's got more leg than that. Second and 10. Deep in the middle, almost picked oh, off. Oh, oh Bakari Rambo. And, and that would have turned the field upside down. Rambo would have took this return at least 25 yards. This had to be a miscommunication. Brantley thought the receiver was coming to the middle of the field. He went to the outside of the field. Rand, Rambo would have had that ball at least to the 40-yard line going in. Third and 10. That's Chaz Henry hoping for a chance. Brantley of Burton. Sixteen seconds to go. Georgia took one of their two timeouts. Fourth and seven. Yeah, you know, when we talked about it in the open, that not only staying in it for the winner, but the disaster if you lose it. I mean, it, the whole season kind of goes down and you can see the type of effort I, I think both teams feel that that they gotta have this game now Mark Rick Urban Meyer now Myers wants to talk to somebody anybody Urban Meyer I has to be let's get our blocks first before we run and, and cover this kick. A blocked kick can beat us. Well, Mark Richt has, uh, his special teams have excelled in his 10 years at Georgia, but they have no blocked kicks this year. Brandon Smith is back. It's a little pooch punt of sorts, but it's a dandy. Oh, muffed. Picked up by Brandon Smith. Nailed at the six. That's a it's overtime. Here's Brandon Smith back. Whoops. So how about this football game? One of the best we've done here, isn't it? Oh, my goodness. Florida has 444 yards in this game. Georgia has 440. Four yards apart. 
Well, that's appropriate, isn't it? 31 all. And Murray, I expect, will take a knee. Overtime in Jacksonville. Overtime. They've been playing this thing forever. Overtime rules went into effect in the 90s. This is the first overtime ever. We welcome you back to Jacksonville, Georgia, and Florida, tied at 31. Let's go uh, through the overtime rules. A coin toss will decide possession. The offense will start at the opponent's 25-yard line. Each team keeps the ball until scoring or failing to make a first down. And uh, noteworthy, beginning with the third overtime, teams must attempt a two-point conversion after a touchdown. Well, so does anybody have an advantage? I would say that going into this, you'd have to give the advantage to Georgia because of the better field goal kicker. Besides that, I think it's dead even. Matt Austin is explaining to the group at midfield about the overtime rules. You see the Georgia bunch. Mike Pouncey. Matt Elam. Laurentry McCray. McCray. And the Georgia Bulldog sideline. They were down 21-7 was Georgia. At the halftime break, Florida looked to be completely in command. But uh, this tenacious Georgia team dominated the third quarter, scored 10, ultimately tied it up 24 all. And then, uh, having fallen behind to Florida 31 24, came back and tied it up, went for two and got it. A.J. Green came alive in the last drive. He got the wild card with Orson Charles at tight end. Charles not in there right now, is it? Caleb King is the deep back, and Charles is not. That's A.J. Green starting in motion. Play action. Kane with another good block. One-on-one -on -one in the end zone for Durham. And Ahmad Black almost had the interception. Had the matchup again that they wanted. Durham 6-5 matched up against the safety. Ball was not thrown exactly where Durham wanted it, and Black almost had a shot at it. Durham comes off. Tavares King comes on at wide receiver. There's King, 63-yard touchdown catch. That seems so long ago. I saw Bruce Figgins out there, the third-team tight end. And Orson Charles is also... In on this play. Yeah, it's all alone out here. Two best players matched up against. No help. Blitz. King. Maybe the 23. Looks more like the 24. Florida loaded the box that time and dared Georgia to throw again. Now three defenders off the field. There's Trey Burton. 51-yard touchdown run, among other contributions he's made today. Third and nine. Just can't get a sack here if you're Aaron Murray, obviously. Nothing bad. Incompletion is not the worst thing with your with the field goal kicker. There's the snap. Three-man rush. Murray down the middle. Tip. Intercepted. Will Hill. Down the sidelines, Murray's the only man who can stop him. There's the block on Murray. He's still going. No signal yet. Still no signal. 
Yep, I think his left foot came out. I got him out. I got him out. Now remember, Florida doesn't get the ball on the half yard line. They get the ball back on the 25. That's right. Rolling on the field. Ball carry went out of bounds at the one yard line. It'll be Florida's ball, first and 10. His left foot went out before he reached it over. See his toe on the line? Watch his left toe. Tavares King, you know what? Murray did a good job of slowing him down, and then King comes across and pushes him out right before the game was over. It's the left foot ruled out of bounds. Here we go. That one is blocked. Well, you can't tell where the can't ball is it. relative to well, the... Well, you can't uh, see his foot either. Here's one, our best look. Yep, one more, one more step right here. It's out, and the ball is short. First down from the 25-yard line in my mind. What a big difference. That's why I... Not a big overtime rules guy in college football. Our truck is saying he might have gone out even at the five. Mm. Very close. Left foot again, obviously. Yep. Either way, good job. Somebody noticed it. Again, Jim Allison is the replay official. And overtime rules... They get the ball back at the 25. You got to give the officials a kudos on this one. They chased it down. Remember, they're chasing down elite athletes. And they were right on the call. This isn't an overturn. They got it right. That was the one thing Aaron Murray couldn't do was throw the ball. He had a guy right in his face when he threw it. After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The ball carrier stepped out of bounds short of the goal line. He floored his ball first and 10 of 25. Well, first of all, let's go back and look at the play. Pressure up front in Murray's face. Comes right up the gut here into Murray, and then over the middle, the ball gets tipped back. Watch Murray. He gets pressure up front. The ball goes high. It was tipped. Was it Bostic that tipped it? Number 52. Could have been Jelani Jenkins. Could have been Jenkins. 43, 43 yeah. yes. See the hand in his face? Yes, it was Jenkins. Good eye, Vern. Jelani Jenkins tipped it. And, and Will Hill ran. Rainey. Off the suspension list after a five-game absence. And he is had a well, Will Hill. Well, remember for Will, even if they don't, it's Florida that gets the ball again. So he's got time. If Florida doesn't score or misses a field goal, Florida starts another series. Second and seven. Not a great field goal kicker. You got to let him put three points on the board. But Florida's field goal kicker ended the drought a while ago. He was 0 for 4. Oh, he's got a man open. Rainey tipped away at the last minute. As Sean Williams, number 36. That's funny. Now, I thought that he wasn't open. I thought Sean Williams had a beat on this one. I went, this, is, this could be a disaster. Sean Williams was all over the play. And I thought that was just too dangerous of a throw. I'll defer. <laughs> I gave you the one before. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, we share and share alike. Now, what does he do? What does Urban do? Does he trust his field goal kicker and run it right into the middle of the field and give him a field goal try to win it? You know, a running play could pick up the first down. Burton's the quarterback on third and seven. They'll throw it. Swing pass. Caught. Out of bounds. It's going to be up to Chaz Henry. Yep, left hash. Well, that was a nice change up. They had the running quarterback in there, but they threw the ball. Chaz Henry came on in place of Caleb Sturgis. Sturgis, an outstanding place kicker for Florida. 
finally yielded to a stress fracture in his lower back. They thought they'd get him back this week. They did not. Chaz Henry for the win. Do they ice him? Oh, they will. 37 yards. You could tell that was coming. Yep. Watch a mark. Yep. Time out. This is fun, isn't it? My gosh. Well, Chaz Henry. He hit his first two when he first replaced Caleb Sturgis. But he missed that big one against Mississippi State wide right. That was his first field goal attempt today from the right hash. He then, oh boy, knuckled it in. Showed some emotion. And now Chaz Henry, the senior punter as Aaron Murray can do not but uh, say a small prayer. Henry. Yeah, of all his interceptions, the one Aaron's going to regret the most is that last one. John Fairbanks will snap it. John Crowfoot will hold it. Chaz Henry will kick it. This is for the victory. Oh, it could be good. It is good. Florida wins. Chaz Henry, the senior, from 37 yards out. My old friend Ben Agajanian would say, good snap, good hold, good kick. Couldn't get it more in the middle than that one. Well, he had to live with one when he missed it. Will Hill said, I almost finished it myself. And Mark Richt. Well, expect to rate this. Yeah, it's, a, it's a tough league, but you know what? The Gators still control their own destiny. If they win out, we'll see them in Atlanta. Chaz Henry from 37. Gators prevail. For Tracy Wolfson, Gary Danielson, our entire CBS broadcast crew. I'm Vern Lundquist saying good night from Jacksonville. Gators still alive.